Columbus, Ohio, it's Ohio State football. Today's opponents are the Hoosiers of Indiana. It's the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Indiana Hoosiers from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Now, as uh, various announcements are being made here over the public address system on behalf of the United Way program, basketball coach Eldon Miller is presently uh, speaking into the stadium PA microphone. And in just a moment or two, we'll be having football here at the Ohio Stadium. And here, extremely well rested from his World Series visits, Kay Kessler. Kay, what do you think about today's game? Oh, wait a minute now. Is this Baltimore or is this Pittsburgh? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing about today's game. It's very important because uh, we're matching two of the league's unbeaten teams right now. Indiana and Ohio State are both 2-0. and And the other game is at Michigan today, where Michigan, the other co-leader at 2-0, and is hosting Minnesota very, very tough ball club as the Buckeyes found out and later Purdue so I think this is a very big ball game people tend to in the past laugh at Indiana I don't think they're doing it now they come in here four and one and maybe they could have been five and oh they lost to a Colorado team they probably should have beaten feel they should have beaten last week they had as we were talking earlier a very bizarre game with Wisconsin they won the game three to nothing in a game that probably should have been 24 to 21 you want to talk about that one another Farm? Yeah, Keith, there were so many interesting aspects to that game. Can you imagine a football team keeping the ball for 12 minutes and 22 seconds, 23 plays, 92 yards, and they didn't score didn't a point? Score a point. And they're, by the same token, Wisconsin had the football at the Indiana two yard line on one occasion threw an interception into the end zone. On another occasion, they had a first down at the four and fumbled. They missed three field goals, two of them 23 yards. I understand that the Wisconsin team had the football one minute and 42 seconds of the fourth quarter. Can it's, you imagine it? I think they had to hide the razor blades for poor Dave McLean, but the Hoosiers won it, and that's one of the reasons they're 2-0, and and they have a very young defense that they're really, they're not so sold on. They're very excited about their offense, as we've talked about with this fine passing quarterback, Tim Clifford, and he has a great core of receivers, but Tim is a 62% passer, and that's going to pose a real, real problem for the Buckeyes today, because I know they feel they have to pass to beat the Buckeyes. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, there has been some word that Indiana might well go to three wide outs, as you mentioned a little earlier. And uh, that, of course, could only mean one thing. They do indeed plan to throw the football. And they have an excellent sophomore tight end in Bob Stevenson. He's about 6'4", 234, and they're very proud of him. They're very proud of the rest of their receiving core. One of them, Steve Corso, son of the coach. And they say he is not playing because he's the son of the coach. He's playing because he has excellent hands. And Kate, on the Ohio State side of the ledger, the Buckeyes are still trying to fight through this injury situation. Last week, uh, you well recall, the situation became almost dire when the Buckeyes were down to their fourth tailback, who happened to be a freshman. Now, Tim Spencer played very well, but the fact remains, when you're playing your fourth stringer, you've got to be hurting. Well, you certainly do, and uh, they still may be in trouble again today. Cal Murray, the leading rusher, an excellent back. He's just having a fine year. Is still bothered by injury. Coach Bruce says he intends to play him and see what he can do. But by the same token, he doesn't have Jimmy Gale. Of course, we made a point earlier of pointing out that Ricky Johnson is through for the year. That's a tough break. Jimmy Gale not playing today. That's a tough break. He may make a little switch. He's had a secret practice. Practice has been closed all week. There's a possibility Rick Volley will swing over from fullback and play a little tailback. We don't know about that and we'll have to wait and see. Indiana Mar is worried to death that, that Earl will go back to one of Woody's set plays and fullback him to death in the submission with uh, Paul Campbell and Volley. It'll be interesting to see what Ohio State does elect to do. And, of course, they've had another position that's been no end of trouble for them this year, and that's the tight end position. That wasn't a fun, was it? No, really? it was not. Well, it is. That's a tough one. Uh, Ron Barwig is out one more game. Jimmy Houston is still out, and those are two fine tight ends. 
and probably Bill Jaco, who was a tight end two years ago, missing all last year and then starting this year at tackle. I wouldn't be surprised Bill Jaco starts at tight end today. Yes, I rather uh, imagine that he will be going, and then behind him will likely be Brad Dwelly, who made his first collegiate appearance, and what an appearance it was when he scored the only touchdown for the Buckeyes. That's right, a touchdown pass for Mark Sleister, who uh, is having an excellent year, is the Big Ten's leading receiver. Marv, they flipped the coin up into the air, and it came down somewhere. Ohio State called it right. They won the toss. They will receive. Indiana will defend the south goal. How much of a factor the wind is today? I'm not sure. It certainly was last week when it was really gusting down there. I don't think it's quite as severe, but we've certainly got a very ominous looking day as I look above me with the, uh, with the clouds, and uh, I hope we get through this one. Here come the Hoosiers on the field right now. About an hour and a half prior to game time, it was bright and sunshiny and clear, a little on the chilly side, but really a delightful day. But since then, it has clouded up, and uh, as Kay has indicated, the sky looks very ominous. We've got some black clouds overhead. Obviously, you brought those with you from Pittsburgh. I hope Kay? they're back over there again today, tormenting Howard and all of his cronies. Now you see Lee Corso leading his Hoosiers out there. Here's an interesting thing about Lee Corso. Do you realize, Marv, that he is in his seventh year and he is number two on the coaching dean list of the Big Ten? Bo Schembechler, his 11th year at Michigan. Lee Corso is number two in the line of progression right at the moment. And boy, he's got his team a little bit cranked up. There's Lee pacing across the 50 now, and he's going to do, he'll pull all stops. Indiana was worried to death that Rick Venturi stole some of their thunder last uh, week with their onside kickoffs and, and gambling on fourth down and the way Rick Venturi was carousing on the field like Lee Corso. But there the Buckeyes are, Marv. They're about ready to receive the kickoff. And uh, Kevin Kellogg will be kicking off for the Indiana Hoosiers as this football game is just about ready to start. Awful lot of red and white out there, Marvin. It's going to be very confusing, I'm sure, for a while. The Buckeyes have their red on top. The Hoosiers have their red on the bottom. They call their red crimson. Crimson, the Buckeyes like to say theirs is scarlet. Tyrone Hicks on the near side. Gary Williams on the far side, ready to receive the kickoff. Kellogg will be kicking off for the Indiana Hoosiers. And in just a moment or two, this football game will be underway. Indiana has not beaten Ohio State since 1951. There is the approach by Kellogg. There's the kick. A nice one carrying downfield. Tyrone Hicks takes it at the four, drops it, goes back, picks it up at the two, and starts upfield. He angles to the 10, stays on his feet, is to the 15, and that's it. He might have dropped the football. There's a scramble over there at the 15-yard line. And Corso says the Hoosiers have it. He's got penetration down to about the 25-yard line. Ohio State has the ball, Marv, but that's two fumbles on one play for Tyrone Hicks. Getting up off the bottom of the pile for Ohio State is Rick Bolly. He may or may not have been the one to recover. On the offensive line for Ohio State, the tight end will be Bill Jaco. The left tackle, Tim Burke, left guard, Ernie Andrea, center, Tom Wall, right guard, Ken Fritz, right tackle, Joe Lukens, and split end is Gary Williams. All right, here is Ohio out of the huddle. Mark Sleaster from the 15-yard line. It's over a five-man defensive line. Sleaster rolling back, going to run with it, comes out to the 20, to the 25, is upset at the 26. Tackle was made by Mark Longshore, left cornerback. The option play has given giving Indiana trouble in all five ball games. The one thing they haven't been able to defend, and did you notice then, Marv, the tailback, Rick Bolley, the fullback, Paul Campbell. That Buckeye backfield will be Art Sleister at quarterback, Bolley at tailback, Paul Campbell at fullback, and Doug Donnelly is the flanker. First down, Ohio State. Line of scrimmage, the 26 as Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Sleister on a quick handoff to Campbell, and he goes about a yard. Brent Tisdale, number 97, and Mark Rodriguez, number 57, move in to make the tackle at the 23, or make it the 28-yard line. Pickup of about two, let's call it second and eight. On our option run a moment ago, 
he had two fullbacks ostensibly leading the way because Campbell and Volley were his escort. Rick Volley is in there at the eye back position for Ohio State as Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Sleister options, pitches it to Volley, Volley to the 30, the 35, slips and sprawls at about the 37 or 8. Steve Mitchell is there to make sure he does go down. They're going to mark it at about the 37, and that should be a first down for Ohio State. The instant he let go of that football, Art Schleister got really nailed by Brent Fizz there. They're going to mark it at the Ohio State 37. That's the second Buckeye first down of the game, both by running. Here is Brad Dwelly coming in at the tight end spot, replacing Bill Jaco in the lineup for Ohio State. Wide to the left goes Chuck Hunter for the Buckeyes. To the right is Doug Donnelly. Sleister dropping back to throw the first pass of the game, throws the bomb upfield. Donnelly's got it. He's at the 20. He's tackled at the 16-yard line, and the official fell flat. Donnelly gets it down to the 16-yard line on a bomb from Sleister. Watch, uh, watch Doug Donnelly here. There's the fake, and Art looks to his left, now wheels, and all, our, all Doug Donnelly did was run a streak right down the sidelines. He gets it about on the 33-yard line, 30-yard line. Now he tries to reverse his field. Bad slips, but he has a first down on the loser 16-yard line. All right, first and 10 for the Buckeyes at the Indiana 16 on the long pass from Sleister to Donnelly. Here's the eye formation, two wide receivers. Sleister pitches back to Bali. Bali tries the right side. He's at the 10. He's out of bounds at the 11. Make it the six yard line. Bali out of bounds at the six. Craig Wolves knocks him out. And that will be very close to still another first down. Watch this. There's some excellent blocking by the Buckeye line here. There's Kenny Fritz leading it around. And watch Rick jump right over the top there. An excellent run by Rick Bali. A great block by Kenny Fritz and the rest of the line. It is second down, less than a yard to go as Indiana now puts in its goal line defense. Ohio State still in an eye with Donnelly going in motion to the left. Schleister giving it off to Bali and he's got a first down right straight up the middle. Following Tom Waugh, the Buckeye center and uh, the guards, Ernie Andrea and Ken Fritz who opened a hole in the Indiana middle and Bali gets to the three. And there's Lee Corso. He is very upset at the moment. A very nervous man. But he's like that when the score is uh, 40 to 30. You know. That's just Lee. Bali went behind Paul Campbell then, the fullback on that block. All right. First and goal at the three-yard line as Hicks goes in motion to the left for Ohio State. Again, it's Bali hammering off the right side. He's got at most a yard to the two-yard line. Bali, the ball carrier, not much of a hole as Indiana jammed it up quickly on the left side. Greg Wall, the linebacker, filling in for Joe Norman now, a great linebacker of a year ago. Greg made an excellent tackle right there. Second and goal at the two. This is the first possession of the football game, and the Buckeyes are knocking at the touchdown door here. Schleister on a quick handoff to Campbell. Touchdown right up the middle. First man through. Paul Campbell goes over to score. That was explosive. Boy, that was as quick as the snap from the center, and Art immediately slips it off to the left, and Paul Campbell went right over the middle. 85 yards, nine plays. That is offense. The quick handoff there from Schleister to Campbell. Campbell was the front man in the I formation, and he hits it quickly behind Kenny Fritz and Tom Wall, and he was into the end zone before Indiana realized it. Just blew in there. Great, great bit of line blocking by Tom Wall, Kenny Fritz, Ernie Andrea. The Bucks were in a two tight end attack there the last three plays. Anna Kievsky, who is 14 of 15 for the season and extra points, will be trying it. High pass from center, and he missed it. But the high pass from center messed it up. Castagnola had to reach high to get the football, and uh, by the time he sat it down, Anna Kievsky was there to kick, and it threw him completely off stride. 
with a result that Anna Kievsky just sort of jabbed at it and uh, didn't get it far enough. So it is six to nothing now, but a very impressive 85 yard march for Ohio State quickly after the Buckeyes fumbled twice. And you saw it again there, how rapidly number 38, Paul Campbell, burst into the end zone right over right guard and center. Buckeyes actually fumbled the opening kickoff twice. No laughing matter. Neither was the 85-yard march in nine plays. Al Daring and Lonnie Johnson line up deep for Indiana as uh, Bob Atha prepares to kick off for Ohio State. There is Atha rubbing the football up a little bit. And now he will set it on a tee at the 40-yard line. I guess the weather was really delightful for those World Series games. <laughs> I'm surprised those fields aren't shrinking and just drying up to nothing, but they may never dry up. I think they'll finish that at spring training, Mar. One game in Orlando, another one in Miami. They ought to move it to the Astrodome. There's the approach by Atha. A nice long one carrying well into the end zone and out of the end zone for an automatic touchback. The Hoosiers will get it first and 10 at their own 20. 69 yards in the air by Bobby Atha, who incidentally kicked a 50-yard field goal this season. So for the first time today, the Indiana Hoosiers get possession of the football. Buckeye defensive line will be Henson, Sawicki, and Foster, outside linebackers, Laughlin, and Ferguson. This defense is getting better by the game. Clifford is the quarterback, and he's a fine one for Indiana. Clifford gets the ball, hands it off to Park Raider. Park Raider hits into the middle to about the 22-yard line. Got about two. Park Raider, the ball carrier, runs into Luther Henson, number 54, and Marcus Merrick, number 36. Mike Park Raider's a fine little back, and he is small. He was too small for Ohio State, they said. Son of a former Buckeye, Jerry Park Raider. The Buckeye secondary, rover back Todd Bell, cornerbacks Mike Guess and Ray Ellis, safety man Vince Skillings. Second and eight at the Indiana 22. Clifford dropping back to throw the first pass for Indiana, throws it upfield. It's caught by Stevenson and he's hit immediately at the 28 yard line. Ray Ellis got Stevenson. Stevenson's a good pass receiver. He's the big rangy tight end. Sophomore. Buckeyes were congratulating Ray Ellis on this tackle. He does stop him short of the first down. Look at Clifford set up, though. Good thrower. And watch the big tight end spear the ball wide open. Nice tackle here. Saves the first down, but it's a six-yard pickup. Third down and two. Lonnie Johnson comes in at the tailback spot for Indiana for Hartbreaker. They alternate a lot. Third and two here for the Hoosiers. The ball is given off to Hawk Raider, and he doesn't get it. He stopped right at the 28-yard line. Make that Lonnie Johnson. He does not have it as Alvin Washington and Luther Henson are through there to get him. And Keith Ferguson was in there, 65. I think I watch it here now. Here comes Lonnie Johnson. He's our leading ball carrier. Started awfully deep. I think the first right there is the hit by Alvin Washington, 15. Underneath it, also Keith Ferguson. Larry LeVette will come in to kick for Indiana. Mike Guess, the deep man for the Buckeyes. Keep in mind the line of scrimmage is the Indiana 28-yard line. Ohio State sends 10 men up front. There's the ball pass from center. A high, high kick carrying downfield. Guess takes it at the Buckeye 35. Comes up about three yards to the 38 and is tackled. Well, that scared me to death. Mike fielding that one. That looked like a fair catch if I ever saw one. That ball just hung up there. And that is really risky, risky punt returning, but he brought it back about four yards. So for the second time today, the Ohio State Buckeyes get the football. They lead six to nothing as they went 85 yards and nine plays on the first possession. Wide to the right is Donnelly. To the left is Gary Williams. Long count by Sleister. Sleister optioning left, gonna run with it, is out to the 40, out to about the 44 yard line and knocked out of bounds. Sleister, the ball carrier, running wide, got outside the end and picked up about five yards. Give Paul Campbell the credit on a block on that one too. That sprung him clear.
Art Mike almost took out the Indiana bench, too, when he was finally nailed at the sidelines. Look at that Lee Corso pace. Second down and five for Ohio State. The line of scrimmage is uh, the 44-yard line. Five-man defensive line for Indiana. Sleister pitches back to Bali. Bali finds a, a little hole and gets it nearly to midfield. Bali, the ball carrier, and he cut that play back farther. There was a big hole. Yes, there was, but he decided to get the first down, and when he saw daylight, he put the head down, and he just knifed in there. And he's got it out to about the 50, the fifth first down for the Buckeyes. There you see Earl Bruce, the Buckeye coach, studying the action, and he's got to be rather pleased with what he sees. The uh, latter coach is Bill Miles, offensive tackle and tight end coach. Sleister on a draw play to Bali up the middle. He's got good yardage to the Indiana 42. Bali carrying Rui and Wilhite make the tackle, but in Indiana territory. I hope they have that one again. Here it is. Now you watch. Bobby gets some blocking, but he runs right through a couple of tackles right there. Keeps on going. That's an excellent eight-yard run. Rick Bolly running out of the tailback, the eye back, and there's Lee Corso exhorting his ball club. Come on, let's be defensive. Bolly has 36 yards in six carries. Not a bad average. Second down and two. The line of scrimmage, the Indiana 42, as the Buckeyes have crossed the 50 already. Sleister watches as Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Sleister on a quick handoff to Campbell. Big hole up the middle. He's at the 30, the 25, the 20, and brought down. And again, the official fell down. Long game by Paul Campbell. Watch it on the replay. Watch Paul Campbell change directions right there. Oh, a beautiful change of directions by Campbell. He's got the ball all the way down to the 18. There he is again. Watch this change of direction. Right now, he plants that foot, escapes another tackle, a first down on the Hoosier 18, the sixth of the game. Boy, that was some run by the fullback. There was some very fine footwork by Campbell. Donnelly goes in motion to the left, first and 10 at the Indiana 18. Again, it's Campbell who gets about three to the 16-yard line. Campbell hit that off his own left tackle, and Indiana moved in quickly. They're going to mark it right there at the 16-yard line. There have been some big plays already for the Buckeyes in this ball game. The 47-yard pass to Donnelly, a 24-yard run, run by Campbell here. Rick Bolley has been explosive. The Buckeyes, I think, are a little chagrined from last week. Tom Wall, the fine Buckeye center, gets out over the ball as Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Bolly is on the wing. Sleister rolling out to the right, got good lead blocking. He's at the 15, and an Indiana man gets him with a jersey and throws and him down. He in the got an awful late shot. The second one wasn't bad. The third one was terrible. Brent Tisdale got him, and Sleister gets up kind of holding the back of his neck. Watch it on the ground level camera here now. When they get him by the jersey, this is all right. They pull him down there. There's a great pursuit by the Indiana defense. This man, Tisdale, just explodes in there. They rip him and get the jersey down. Now, the second hit the man couldn't avoid. He comes in and plows him, but the third one, the official blocked out. <laughs> Ohio State calls timeout, and here's Sleister, who I'm afraid is hurting. He, he really is coming over to the sideline. There's uh, Lee Corsa with his uh, brain trust on the far sidelines. Jim Barry said he needs a mobile telephone to keep up with him. Uh, I'll tell you, they're going to have to get those officials looking a little bit closer because Art is in agony down on the sidelines as he talks to Bill Miles and Coach Earl Bruce. He's holding his back. He's not coming out. He's a tough cookie. I didn't think much of that last shot. Earl Bruce is talking with Sleister, and they're not necessarily talking about football strategy. They're talking about physical condition. Bill Miles is uh, standing alongside. We got Quickie statistics on Art Sleister already. Young as this game is, uh, eight minutes old, Art's rushed only three times, but for 21 yards, and he's one for one with that 47-yarder to number 47. And he engineered a superb drive the first time the Buckeyes had the ball, and there isn't anything wrong with this one thus far. It is third and four at the Indiana 12. 
lines up on the wing and now starts in motion to the left. Sleister on a handoff to Volley, and Volley gets two tough yards to the 10-yard line. Will Height and Evans are there to get him. Volley the ball carrier, and Hart is uh, limping perceptibly. Now the field goal unit's in now. They're uh, short of the first down by two yards. Anakievsky, who is five of five in field goals, he's 14 of 16 in extra points. We'll be trying this one. Greg Castagnola holding. Castagnola kneels at the 17-yard line, so that means it'll be a 27-yard field goal attempt. Now the whistle blows. Something is wrong. Delay of game. It's going to be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Bucks took a little too long figuring that one out. Now they move it back to the 15-yard line, so obviously Castagnola moves back five more yards, so this now will be a 32-yard attempt. Hutchings is the center. Good pass from center. Anakievsky kicks it. It has the distance, and it is good. Anakievsky kicks a 32-yarder, so Vladi is 6-6 six of six in field goals this year. And a little man's better with a field goal than he is the uh, point after. He's missed two of those, although the one he just missed moments ago was because of a high snap from center. Actually, the kicking game, there's been a little bit of problem. That's the only problem the Buckeyes have shown. But trying to get the first field goal away, there was a delay of the game penalty that made it a 32-yarder. And we're going to have another look at uh, Yanni's 32-yard field goal. Good right foot there, and the ball sails over very nicely. 10 to nothing, 551 left in the first quarter. Five minutes and 51 seconds remain here in the first quarter. Buckeyes on top, nine to nothing as uh, Bob Atha prepares to kick off. Indiana has two deep men, Lonnie Johnson on the far side, Al Daring on the near side. Marv, right, that's the way last week's ball game started for the Buckeyes. A touchdown and a field goal, their first two possessions, and they've done it again today. Then they kind of went into a stall, and Northwestern actually uh, beat them the rest of the ball game. Atha approaches the football. And boots it. A low and going downfield. It has good distance. Daring takes it in the end zone and downs it for a touchback. So Indiana will get the ball for the second time today. First and 10 on their own 20-yard line, but Indiana trails 9 to nothing. Indiana's only had the ball for three plays now, and the Buckeyes have had 17 plays, covered 136 yards. 10 points worth of that, and the Hoosiers nine yards in their three plays. Wide to the right is Fischel, to the left is Freedy for Indiana. Park Raider is the eye back. Clifford dropping back to pass, has time, throws it upfield, deflected, incomplete. Todd Bell may have had a hand on it. And earlier, one of the Buckeyes could conceivably have tipped the ball. Well, the ball wobbled something fierce, and Clifford's a better thrower than that. I'm sure he's a better passer, let's say, because that ball just kind of wobbled out there. Went out there like a wounded duck. That's the first incompleted pass of the ball game. Second down and 10. The ball comes back to the Indiana 20. Johnson now shifts to fullback, and Hartrader remains in as the eye back. Clifford looks over a five-man line, drops back to pass, throws a little one over the middle. It's caught by Lonnie Johnson at the 24, and he's tackled at the 24-yard line by Jim Walker. A sure shoestring tackle by number five, co-captain Jim Laughlin. He's having a great year. It's a little dumper, a little outlet pass right over the middle. He completes it. Watch number five come into your picture here. Open field tackle and excellent. Four-yard gain comes third and six. Laughlin is very, very sound fundamental. 
Third down and six. Ball is at the Indiana 24. Only one setback for Indiana. Clifford dropping back to pass, has loads of time. Overthrows his man, almost intercepted by Mike Getz. Acrobatic Mike Getz, he went after the football, almost had it. Boy, there was a fine defensive play, and I'd like to see him that close to the man the ball's the receiver. We've been playing a little bit off of the receivers. Boy, Mike Getz was right on it on that. Steve Corso was the intended receiver, but actually Corso had to battle to keep the ball from being intercepted. And to save his neck, that's the son of Coach Lee Corso. LeVette will go back to kick for Indiana, guess the deep man for Ohio State. Good pass from center. LeVette kicks high downfield. Mike Guess allows the ball to bounce. It takes a lateral bounce and might have been touched by a Buckeye, and uh, he fell on the ball. Mike DeAndrea hit it. It bounced into Mike DeAndrea, I think, Mark. And the Hoosiers do indeed have it. What a lucky bounce. DeAndrea tried to get out of the way of the ball. Watch the ball come backwards here now. And it it hits like five yards, ten yards, and it hits his foot, and he tries to recover and does not. And boy, is that a big gainer for the Hoosiers. Steve, Steve Tillery is the boy who fell on the ball for Indiana. So the Hoosiers get the ball back, Kate. That may be a league for so play. That guy's tricky. Actually, it was a poor kick. But Indiana gets the football at their own 46-yard line. The ball is pitched out to Hartrader. Hartrader around the right side gets the midfield. Where Marcus Merrick beats him at the 50-yard line, and that's it. They're going to mark it back a little shy of the 50. Luther Henson was also in there, number 54. That has to go as a fumble, incidentally, for the Buckeyes, and technically a possession. Second down and seven. So that and bounce becomes a lucky bounce. Clifford on a quick handoff to Durazio up the middle, and he's got a first down to the Buckeye 43-yard line. Durazio on a quick hitting playoff right guard, and that's the first Indiana first down of the game. That's the first time fullback Mike Durazio has carried. He's a good one. There goes Durazio right up the middle. Nice line blocking. You see Marcus Merrick taken out, and then Alvin Washington comes in and makes the tackle, but uh, good blocking by the Indiana line. First and 10, the Buckeye 43 now. Clifford with a ball, dropping back to pass. The rush is on, the pass is thrown. It's caught by Stevenson, and he's hit solidly by Ray Ellis at the Buckeye 35. But it is a completed pass for Indiana. He was hit solidly, but he is built solidly. Watch it on the replay here now. It's a great shot he gets from Clifford, and then from Ray Ellis, he just bounces right back up, and it's down to the Buckeye 35. The gain is eight. It is second down and two. Look at it from the ground now. Watch this shot by Ray Ellis. Al Washington comes in to help, but Stevenson is big, 234. Indiana lines up with two tight ends now. There's the uh, the elephant eye, as they call it, with all of the backs in there in an eye. Mess up in the backfield, whistle blows, and I think delay of game will be called against Indiana. They were a little slow in getting the play underway. You only have 25 seconds, and I think Clifford used too much time. Tim Sawicki didn't waste any, though, getting all over, uh, all over Timmy Clifford. You're right, it is a delay penalty. Five-yard delay of game penalty moves Indiana back to the Buckeye 40-yard line. Down is the same, but now it is second and seven. Durazio and Hark Raider are in there in the I formation. Clifford. Again, using a long count, hands it off to Durazio, and they get him right at the line of scrimmage. A good play by Tim Sawicki, the middle guard. They 
Couldn't move Tim out of there. They tried, but he didn't budge. Number 68, you watch him now, isolated here. He just steps right over the center, the block, and he nails Durazio with no game. That middle guard position has to be one of the most thankless areas uh, in football. It's real tough. You're getting double teams so often, and Sawicki plays that position well. Third down and about seven. The ball is at the 40. Back to pass is Clifford. Throws a high rainbow pass upfield. It is out of bounds. No good. Well, they had the blitz on, and they've got Clifford on the seat of his pants there at midfield. The blitz was on, and he still got rid of it. Now you see him isolated on the streak, man, Mike Creedy. He goes down. Actually, he's got to play beat. If uh, the blitz hadn't been on and Clifford didn't have to throw the ball so soon, they may have had a hook up there. Instead, they've got an incompletion. Now it is fourth down and six to go. Now, Indiana's a gambling football team. They, you can expect just anything from them. LeVette is back in kick formation, but they may or may not punt. Good pass from center. LeVette is going to kick. Aims for the sidelines. Boots it downfield. Gets a pretty good kick that's going to go out of bounds at about the... Uh, we'll wait for the official to mark it. It isn't quite as good as we thought. It's somewhere around the 15-yard line. Well, that beats into the end zone, though. It's about the 15 right. So the Hoosiers have uh, had possession here now quite a while. The Buckeye defense actually did a good job when it was put in the hole uh, by that... Uh, Unlucky bounce for them uh, that ran into DeAndrea and the Hoosiers gave possession with the defense stiffened. Donnelly starts in motion to the right. The ball is handed off to Campbell. Campbell up the middle, drags one man with him to the 19-yard line. And then Terry Talon hangs on and makes the stop. Talon is from Hamilton, Ohio, a 228-pound junior. There are a lot of Ohioans on this Indiana ball club. Three of the four captains of Indiana are from Ohio, and the only thing is un that is unusual about that is usually all four of them are from Ohio. Donnelly in motion to the right, second and six at the 19. A quick hand off to Campbell. Campbell's got a first down. He just fights his way out to the 27 or 8 yard line. Now he's limping a little bit going back to huddle, but boy, Paul Campbell has been an explosive pullback today. Watch him go through there, and he changed directions one more time. There he slipped out of Trisdale's hands. He got a real shot then, but he also got the first down out to the 29, the seventh for the Buckeyes. Buckeye offense has moved very, very well today. I'll tell you, they're getting hit, though. Ball is at the Buckeye 29, 9 to nothing. Ohio State leads. Pitch back to Bali. Bali around the right side as a flag goes down, and Bali gets it out to about the 33 yard line, but a flag is down. And they're pointing to Joe Lukens, number 72, the freshman tackle from Moeller, an excellent one, and it's against the Buckeyes. A holding call will be assessed against Ohio State from this point. Flag has been dropped at the 29-yard line. That was a bugaboo of the Bucks last week. They had nine penalties, Marv, came into the game, the least penalized team in the Big Ten. Those nine penalties hurt, and here's one on a first down play where Bali had five. Instead, there's a big step off, clear back to about the 14. 15-yard penalty, illegal use of the hands is called against Ohio State. And it now moves the Buckeyes all the way back to their own 14-yard line. The down is first, but now it's 25 to go. Campbell is the lone setback as Donnelly goes in motion to the left. Sleester takes the draw, goes back to pass, throws it outfield. It is caught by Gary Buckeyes gained 21 of those 25 yards back, so it is now second and four. The gun sounds. That's it. 
That's the end of the first quarter. So, at the end of the first quarter, Ohio State leads 9 to nothing. We'll be right back with the start of the second quarter after this brief pause. This is the Ohio Public Broadcasting Network. It's Marv Holman with Kay Kessler. We're ready to start play in the second quarter with Ohio State completely dominating the first period as Ohio leads nine to nothing. Very efficient first quarter. The Buckeyes technically scored eight each time they had their football. A touchdown, then a, then a field goal by uh, Yannick Yeski, and then, of course, the other time they fumbled the punt uh, because they got a bad bounce on it. All right, it's second down and four now at the Ohio State 35. Pitch out to Bali. Bali tries the left side. He's close to a first down to the 39-yard line, and he may have it. Buckeyes had to go 25 yards to get this first down, and they have nearly done it in two plays. We'll wait for them to mark the ball. They set it down at the 39, and that will be very, very close. Earl Bruce is looking at it down there at the near sideline, which is the west sideline here at Ohio Stadium. And they have to bring the chains all the way from the east side. Unofficially, Mar Valle has 38 yards in seven carries in the first quarter. Paul Campbell, 45 yards in six. Art Sleaster is two for two passing for 68 yards and 21 yards rushing. Very good offense. And Ohio State has the first down. Scrimmage the 39-yard line in Ohio State territory, first and 10. And again, the Buckeyes had to get 25 yards to get that first down because of the penalty. Donnelly to the left. Now starts in motion to the right. Sleister on a draw play to Bolly. Bolly's got good yardage to midfield. Another first down for Ohio State. Rick Bolly is running very well out of the tailback position. Watch him. They, they call him the Penguin, number 22. Watch those quick feet now. And he'll adjust positions, just or directions. Now he does a little leap. A dips you do in midair, and he adjusts positions one more time. Changes directions. That's a fine run, 11 yards. Ninth first down. Buckeyes have moved the ball to midfield. First and 10. Five-man defensive line. Schleister pitches back to Bali. He's got good lead blocking. He's at the 40. He's at the 36. Fine run by Bali. Another first down. And they're just chewing Indiana up. And leading the way that time, number 47, uh, Doug Donnelly. Wants the quick pitch back. Bali running very well from the eye back position. And look at him change directions. He is doing an excellent job there. Paul Campbell got a dandy block on that play as well, and Bali follows his blockers effectively. Now you know what they were doing behind closed doors all week. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Schleister on the quick hand off to Campbell. He's at the 30. He's at the 27-yard line and tackled by Randy Wilhite. And that Buckeye offensive line who has played extremely well this year, and they are sharp today. Look at this, though. The beauty of it is that, that line is doing an excellent job of blocking, but now watch Paul Campbell here now adjust his direction again and take good advantage of the blocking. Little Calvin Murray now comes in at the eye back position for the first time. He had a very painful hit pointer in last week's game with Northwestern. Schleister rolls to the right, may pass, may run, going to run. He's at the 25, he's at the 20, tackled at the 20-yard line, first down Ohio State. And Paul Campbell made the block that sprung that one again. Campbell is just having an excellent ball game. He followed Murray and Campbell, and Campbell did the block that got him around the corner. That's the 11th first down. Gainer, six yards, first down on Ohio State. First and 10 for Ohio State, the line of scrimmage, the Buckeye 20. Ohio has come a long way on this possession, but they went 85 yards the first possession. Donnelly in motion to the right, Schleister on a quick hand off to Campbell. Campbell off right guard, gets it to the 16. The bank is really hitting out. 
The Buckeye middle is especially effective. That would be center Tom Waugh, guards Ernie Andrea, and Ken Fritz. Now, there's nothing wrong with the tackles, Joe Lukens and Tim Burke. Scott Burris, on occasion, uh, is in there at the left guard spot, and he's in there right now. Second and six at the Indiana 16. Donnelly in motion to the left, Sleister options, keeps it, bubbles, and I think it's fallen on by Ohio State. Pitch no. out was late. Cal Murray did an excellent job of spotting the fumble, and he dove for it and cradled it. He didn't pounce on it. Watch him cradle the ball now on this replay. The ball just slips loose because Art got hit. Now you watch 43. He doesn't dive on the ball. He protects the ball, and his body took the shot. So many times when you try to dive on the ball, the ball slips away and you get exactly nothing. Third and seven, line of scrimmage now is back at the 18-yard line. So Ohio lost a little. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Sleister dropping back to pass. The blitz is on. Sleister throws over the middle. Off the fingertips and complete. Gary Williams, the intended receiver at the four-yard line. Ball was thrown a little high and complete. A little high, a little hard, but almost on target. Gary Williams was surrounded by three receiver, three defenders on that one. And Art didn't want an intercept, so he tried to hum it in there, and he didn't quite succeed. It becomes fourth at the Indiana 18. Lottie Anakiewski reports into the game for Ohio State, as does Greg Castagnola. Castagnola is an excellent holder. And, Kast and uh, of course, Anakiewski now is six out of six in field goals. It is set down. It is kicked. It is as the distance and is good. Seven out of seven. 12 plays, 86 yards, and the Buckeyes are almost picture perfect offensively today. They have not been stopped. Only that funny bouncing ball that hit the leg of DeAndrea deprived them of possession once, but every time they've had the football, they've taken it across for points, leading 12 to nothing, 11 23, still to play in the second quarter. There's been some a good authoritative running by Paul Campbell and by Rick Volley. They have really done a job opening the hole. But then there's also been some great footwork by Rick Volley running out of the eye back position and Paul Campbell, and Paul Campbell has done some fine blocking. Campbell now has 58 yards and eight carries. Volley has 63 and nine. All right, Al Daring and Lonnie Johnson are your two deep men for Indiana. There you see him on the screen as uh, Bob Atha kicks off. This will go to Al Daring at the six yard line. The 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and his tackle at about the 40-yard line. Line return there. Todd Bell saved that one. As Daring barely broke it, and they're going to mark it all the way up at the 43. What a name that is for a ball carrier. Well, there's Bobby Atha. He's kicked it off. Now, this one's into the wind. It doesn't go quite as deep as normal. Bobby's right there, ready for the tackle, and his foot slipped as he went for it. Fortunately, back of him was Todd Bell, and he made a uh, touchdown-saving tackle, perhaps. Indiana puts the ball in play, drops back to throw a pass. The rush is on. Screen pass is thrown to Hart Raider. He's at the 45. He's at midfield. He's out of bounds at midfield. Ray Ellis drives him out of bounds, but a screen pass effecti effectively executed off to the left. I think they have a screen all the way, and uh, Clifford just dropped back long enough, let them pour in, and then hit Mike for the about a seven yard. Second down and three at the 50 yard line. Five man defensive line for Ohio State. Two linebackers are in close. Quick handoff goes to Durazio. He drives for a first down on left tackle, and he's got it at the Buckeye 45. Tough pullback. Market at the Ohio State 45 yard line, first and 10 for Indiana. Park Raider shovels back into the lineup at the eye back position, and Lonnie Johnson goes out. Those two alternate nearly every play. Wide to the right is Fischel. There's a draw play to Durazio. He is missed at the line of scrimmage, missed by Ellis, and then slowed up and tackled over at the far side. 
couple of missed tackles in there. Tim Sawicki might have been the Buckeye who ultimately got him. Ah, uh, there's Corso now. Boy, is he exhorting him. I think that uh, flag is down. Let's take a look at it on replay. Marcus Merrick, number 36, I think, finally makes the hit that stops him. There, Ray Ellis gets away. Now, Merrick hit him there, knocked him off balance. And there's a step off on the Buckeyes uh, right at that point where Marcus Merrick hitting it's 15 yards after the hit down to about the 26 yard line. Another big penalty on the Bucks. A personal foul is called against Ohio State. I believe that was against Vince Skillings. They're going to mark it down at the 26-yard line now. Indiana picks up 15 easy ones. First and 10 at the 26. Clifford on a pitch out to Hart Raider. Hart Raider is in trouble and hit on a driving tackle by Todd Bell. Boy, he was hit. Todd helps him up, pats him on the back. Todd Bell makes a fine stop at the 26-yard line, so Hart Raider doesn't gain a thing. Second down and 10. Was a good shot by Todd. Durazio comes in. Lonnie Johnson goes out for Indiana. Now they're going to line up with three wide outs. Three wide receivers here as Ohio State loosens its defense. Fischel goes in motion to the left. Back to passes. Clifford has time. Throws the bomb upfield. It is in off the fingertips of Mike Reedy incomplete. Reedy was open, but Clifford threw it a little too far. You know, in the play before, when Todd Bell made the shot on Mike Carkrader, it was a good one, and then he helped him up. Those two are both from Middletown, so they've known each other quite a long while. I believe one went to uh, Middletown High School, and the other one went to Finley, but you're right. They are from the certainly the same town, probably know each other very well. And the wind was blowing the ball then, and Umpire Indiana. ran in and uh, downed it. Indiana gained a little bit on the incompleted pass. It's a little nearer to the 25 now. Clifford dropping back to pass, has time, throws it over the middle. Dropped by Corso. Dropped by Corso, it is incomplete. Pass lit him a little bit too much, but Steve Corso couldn't quite hang on to the ball. There goes the umpire's hat all the way. There's Steve Corso now. He really got bumped by Todd Bell. Tried to get out of the traffic, and he does, but the ball is just off his fingertips. He tips it again, and it falls incomplete. So it's fourth now at the Buckeye 25. Fourth down and 10. The ball is, well, it should be the 26. It isn't quite there, but nearly. And Indiana calls timeout with nine minutes and 52 seconds remaining. And there you see Indiana quarterback Tim Clifford discussing the situation with head coach Lee Corso. Timmy Clifford has really had a fine season up to now. And coming into this game was 64 out of 103 for 811 yards, four touchdowns and four interceptions. He's had a little tougher time of it so far in this first half. He's four out of nine for only 25 yards. But uh, he's been under some pretty good heat, and he hasn't been that far off. He's been putting the ball right on the fingertips. About five, uh, four of those could have been hookups. And it looks like, Marv, they're going for the field goal, which won them the ball game last week against Wisconsin, three to zip. Steve Straub, who kicked the field goal that enabled Indiana to beat Wisconsin last week, three to nothing, will be trying a field goal. It is set down, Straub kicks it, it is off to the left, no good. He did not have the distance, nor did he have the direction. So that one went astray, and the Buckeyes now will get the ball at that spot, since that was kicked beyond the 20. Well, they get six yards. Uh gain on the old rule where formerly they would uh, go to the 20 yard line now it's out to the 26 and once again the Buckeye defense uh, stepping when it had to penalties though that time hurt the Buckeyes a big 15 yard holding penalty or personal foul Calvin Murray is the eye back as Donnelly goes in motion to the left 
Hawks. Leister with the ball, hands it off to Campbell. Campbell runs off right guard, and he's got it out to the 30-yard line. Paul Campbell running effectively today, just as he did last week. Well, he's tickled to death to be back at fullback. He, uh, he said he didn't mind playing tight end if it would help the ball club. And, of course, the Buckeyes, as you pointed out, have been in dire straits for tight ends. Too many injuries, and Jaco is in there now, so Paul can go back to fullback, and he loves it. Second down and six. The line of scrimmage is the third. Sleister pitches back to uh, Calvin Murray. He's at the 30, the 35, the 40, the 43, but a flag is down. Fine run by Calvin Murray, and he has a first down with room to spare, but a flag is down. Ernie Andrea, number 69, pulling guard, led that one, and that's a nice game. But it's going to be for naught. It'll be against Ohio State. The Buckeyes are running into penalty problems today. 13-yard gain becomes a 15-yard penalty, and that's 28 yards in reverse, really. ever live to see the day that we get the Cardinals in the World Series? Well, I'd like to see the Cardinals and the Tigers. Marv, they looked a little bit better this year, though, uh, the, your Cardinals and my Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, they did. And when they do get into the World Series, I hope they play it somewhere in the sunny south or <laughs> indoors. <laughs> They're having a miserable time this year. Oh, that weather is just awful. This could have been a beautiful, beautiful World Series, a great matchup, and it could have been one of the great ones, and right now it's one of the most miserable, mostly because of conditions. All right, it's second down and 23, back at the Ohio State 13-yard line. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Sleister on a draw play to Murray. He's got good yardage. He's at the 15. He is at the 20, and he's out of bounds. He couldn't. They had him hemmed in over there, and uh, Murray wisely went out of bounds. They're going to mark it just shy of the 20. Well, he's just coming back from uh, injury, and uh, this one is almost... Picked up right there. He, the linebacker missed him, and Cal stepped right out of it. If he could have just had this one little burst beyond Tisdale, he'd have been all right. Instead, he goes out to 20, and it's a seven-yard gain, but the Bucks still have a lot of miles to pick up. 16. Third down and 16. Wide to the left is Chuck Hunter. Donnelly to the right. Only one setback now as Donnelly hits in motion. Sleister rolling back to pass. The rush is on. Sleister's going to run. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30, and he is hollered at the 30-yard line. Considerably short of the first down, so for the first time today, Tom Orris will come in to kick. That was interesting because if Donnelly pulled across in motion to this side and they, had all, they flooded the entire left side and and then the guards pulled, and Art had quite an escort there. He got 10 of the yards, but he's still uh, almost six shy. All right, here's Tom Morris back to kick, one of the fine punters in college football. High pass from center. Morris gets off an end over end kick downfield. Wilbur calls for a fair catch, fumbles it, but gets it back at the 21. Wilbur had a difficult punt to handle. He called for a fair catch, tried to grab it, uh, dropped it, but then just pounced on it at the 21 as he was being pursued by the ever-present Jim Laughlin. Ever-present Jim Laughlin is right. Number five is everywhere. He'd be a fine offensive player, you know what? He really would. He's got good hands. All right, first and 10 for the Hoosiers at their own 21, 12 to nothing, Ohio State leads. Hooker dropping back to pass, is rushed by Luther Henson. The pass is thrown to Hart Raider. He's missed at the 20, but they get him at the, about the 28. Al Washington moves in along with Jim Laughlin. And uh, they get Hart Raider at the Indiana 28-yard line. Watch, this is a little pass that Ohio State scored uh, on with Murray as he flips it over, uh, Hart flips over to Murray, and uh, Clifford did it now with uh, Mike Hart Raider, and he springs right across the middle, slips out of two tackles, but he gets seven yards. Second down for Ohio, for Indiana, on the Indiana 28-yard line. Clifford. 
Again, going back to pass. He's rushed, throws it upfield. It's broken up. Incomplete. Lonnie Johnson, the intended receiver. Ray Ellis defending for Ohio State. Boy, Ray Ellis read that all the way. He was going to pluck that one off and take it into the end zone for six. Good defensive play there, just not quite quick enough. It is third down and four. Line of scrimmage, the Indiana 28. A possession play here, stirring the Hoosiers in the face. Fischel lines up wide to the right. Possession play and a good Buckeye defense. Freedy to the left for Indiana. Clifford dropping back to pass, throws one under pressure. It is incomplete. The intended receiver was Mike Freedy, but Clifford wanted to get rid of the football, and he threw it beyond Freedy, out of bounds, incomplete. You get Al Washington blitzing on you like he did then, nobody picked him up. You're going to want to get rid of it, too. And he did. He had to get rid of it a little quick. I'll tell you, this guy can throw, though, Marv. He's, uh, he's not far off the mark. The heat the Buckeyes are putting on him has been the difference. LeVette is in the kick for Indiana. Mike Guess, the deep man for Ohio State. LeVette will be punting into the wind. Gets a high pass from center, but he handles it all right. Gets off a dandy kick downfield. Mike Guess takes it at the Buckeye 25. Comes to the 30 and is still on his feet and finally brought down at about the 32 or 3 yard line. Boy, he's a squiggler, isn't he? He just won't give up. You think you've got him and uh, he spins around and shakes free again and uh, watch him now. He, it's an excellent fun, actually. He does a little uh, dipsy do there and he swings away from that one. That's a real course. You ought to chart that one, Harry. And hangs on there at the end. And then he twists his leg. I uh, can't give that one a whole lot. And then slams it. These are a little bit hot. Buckeyes have it at their own 32, first and 10. And Bali is in there at the eye back position. Donnelly goes in motion to the left. The quick hand off to Campbell. Campbell finds a hole. He's at the 40. He's at the 43. Very close to a first down. Paul Campbell, the ball carrier. Campbell got 113 yards last week, and look at him again here on the replay. He is going to exceed that. Beautiful spin there. Oh, what footwork Paul Campbell is showing. And that Buckeye line is really opening the holes. They're getting the Buckeye backs through the line of scrimmage. So many, many times today. The backs are doing a great job once they're in the clear. Indeed they are. Back to pass, Leister is rushed, is in trouble, runs out of trouble, and it is hammered to the ground at the 42 by Terry Tallon. Boy, he was clobbered. That's really the first time the uh, protection has broken down completely for York. That time he had nothing to do. Second down and 10. Actually, the Buckeyes lost a couple of feet on that play. They're lucky they didn't lose the quarterback. Yes, sir. Mix up on the play. A flag goes down. Sleister throws it. It's incomplete. And down oh. goes Sleister, and he is flat. Mark Rodriguez hit him then on the blitz, and that play did backfire. Uh, the snap was off. The timing was clear off. And he really got a shot, and he's holding his hand down there now. Hart is having trouble with his left wrist, it looks like. He is really holding it, and that was a real shot by Rodriguez. I'll tell you, so watch it here. The Hoosiers are hostile. Well, we don't have time for it to get the mark off. There's a little yeah. discussion going on, and that may be against the Buckeyes. A flag was dropped. Illegal procedure is called against Ohio State, but since the play did come off and it was an incompleted pass, Indiana is going to take the play rather than the penalty. So this brings up a third and ten situation. Indiana is sending in a couple of defensive backs now to bolster the secondary, figuring that Ohio State will likely throw on a third and ten. They are really they storming hard, though. Pitches back to Bolly. bolly has got an escort. He's at the 50, the Indiana 45, and he's got a first down. Hard running by Rick Bolly, and I'm here with some upfront blocking. Ernie Andrea just 
involved somebody under on that play. That's about 14 yards, and you bet he had great blocking, and that was an excellent call. Third and 10, watch it here. Look at this blocking. Now watch him stick his head down and just plow right on out there to the Indiana 44. That's 14 yards. Bali now has 63 yards and nine carries. First and 10 for the Buckeyes on the Indiana 44. Sleister writes it into Campbell, bounces off the tackler, spins away from another one, and is pulled down at the 38 or 9. And there's an Indiana man hurt on the play. This ball game may get a little bit out of hand before it belongs. And that's, that's Trisdale, I think, isn't it? Might be Craig Walls. It is Craig Walls, the linebacker. And I think he's the one that took on Campbell early on that play. He's uh, not very happy. He's in a little pain down there. While they work on him, let's take another look at the play. He hands the ball to Campbell right there. Now watch that shot. Boy, yeah. and he went right down. And Paul hung onto the football, keeps spinning. And Walls is still back there being tended to. That was some collision between Campbell and Walls. And he says, I'm OK. He's going to sidelines, though, for a little more head clearing time. That was a first class collision, Marv. It was indeed. Campbell running very hard, as is Folly. He has a few yards. One more look at that uh, collision of those two trucks. Good handoff. Now watch him reverse, change his position, and whammo did he hit. Paul's got the ball a little loose right there, and as he stared number eight eye to eye, and then he ran away from Tim Wilbur. He took on both linebackers, then Walton and Wilbur. Calvin Murray has come in at the eye back position, second and four. Sleister dropping back to pass, gets good protection, throws it upfield, over the head of Donnelly, and, oh, and look at Donnelly Art. was open. Hart that, is mad at himself. Had that been on target, it would have been six. There's a flag down, though, at the 29. We might have an illegal chuck, or we might have offense. Uh, it is an illegal chuck. Uh, Donnelly still broke clear of that, and Art was furious that he missed him because he had time to throw, and he unloosed it, leased it. But the Buckeyes are going to get a first down out of it. Interference is called against Indiana, and that'll give Ohio State a first down at the Indiana 29-yard line. Five minutes and 18 seconds left in the second period. Ohio State winning 12 to nothing. Draw play to Murray. Murray off the right side is at the 25 and is driven out of bounds. See where he stepped out. Murray, the ball carrier, knocked out by Mark Longshore. They're doing a job of keeping him from going around the corner. His speed has all been lateral so far. If he ever turns it north and south, Calvin may be gone. But he did get the better part of five on that one. He went about 35 for five minute mark. Ball is spotted just inside the Indiana 25 yard line. Second down at about five as Tyrone Hicks reports into the lineup for Ohio State. Schleister on a quick hand off to Campbell and Campbell is pretty well stopped there by Kevin Kinley, who by the way is from Columbus, Ohio, along with big Marty Young isn't from Columbus, Ohio, Opelousas, Louisiana. Give him two inches, and that's the first time in the whole ball game they've stopped Paul Campbell. Third down and four now, Buckeye offense. Finding the going a little tough here as they move the ball down into Indiana territory. Third down and four. To the right is Gary Williams, to the left is Doug Donnelly. Single coverage on Donnelly. That'll be interesting. Blitz is on, Sleister runs out of it, throws it to Jaco. Jaco's got it, and he's out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Cal Murray picked up the blitz, Marv, and he's the one that saved the play. Bill Jaco slipped over the middle, and there wasn't anybody covering him. Watch Cal Murray get the man right out of Art's way there. Great block by Calvin Murray, and a great throw by Art here. Big Bill Jaco from, tight, or from tackle back to tight end, and he gets it down to about the 11. 12-yard game, but give it all to Cal Murray on that one. So the Ohio State Buckeyes have it first and 10 at the Indiana 11-yard line as Brad Dwelly comes into the tight end spot. Two tight ends are in there now. 
Murray, uh, the ball is given off to Bali. Bali at the 10, at the 5, the 4, tackled at the 3. Bali, the ball carrier. Mark Suter saved the touchdown. Boy, is Rick Bali having a ball. He likes that eye back. Look at him here. Paul Campbell leads the way. Paul gets a fine block for him there, and Rick had nobody to beat until right there at the five-yard line. And then he does. He gets two more yards out of it, but the block by Campbell sprung him loose. Paul Campbell sealed off the whole side of the line there with Did that he? block. This time it's Campbell. Hits into the middle. He appears to have it. He did have it. Touchdown, Paul Campbell. On his back, three, three yards, touchdown. So Paul Campbell scores his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ohio State Buckeyes there. increase their lead 18 to nothing. Watch it there as he spins. He's hit earlier, but he spins around as he's been doing all afternoon. Goes in over backwards the last three yards. The Buckeyes covered 68 yards that time in 11 plays. Oh, I'll tell you, Mark, the line blocking has just been tremendous. And Paul Campbell deserved that touchdown because he set up a great block on the play before. Anakievsky trying the extra point. Another high pass from center. Anakievsky's kick is good. So it's 19 to nothing in favor of Ohio State. Well, the closed practice brings this kind of football out from Ohio State. I'd say practice will be closed the rest of the year. I think it might be closed all the way into January. Paul Campbell now 81 yards in just 13 carries. Rick Volley 85 yards in 11 carries. The big thing about it is not just the carries, but it's the blocking that they've been doing. When they don't have the ball, they both block. Uh, volley for Campbell and Campbell for Volley, both of them for Art Schleister. Watches the replay again here now. Slips it to Paul. He gets hit about the two, and he just keeps his feet going, spins around, and goes over backwards. Two touchdowns for Campbell, and the Buckeyes are on top. Boy, that offense is well-oiled today. They've had the ball five times, Marv, and scored four times. The offense did not play well last week, and they knew it. They were embarrassed by it, and they were determined to uh, show some people that they're a lot better football team than they showed last week. Well, they are showing it, and Indiana is the victim thus far. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half, and Ohio State leads 19 to nothing. Bob Atha gets off a nice long kick downfield. Al Daring takes it at the 6, comes out to the 10, to the 15, and they get him at the 20. Tim Spencer, the freshman tailback, is the first one down there to make the stop, so give Spencer credit for the tackle. They stopped them short of the 20, so that's, uh, that's good coverage on the uh, kickoff by the Bucks. It's at the 19-yard line, first and 10 for Indiana. Durazio is the lone setback. Clifford taking a lot of time, gets the ball, rolls back, throws the quick pass to Stevenson. Here, Freedy, he's got it, and he's out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at about the 28. So they'll be a yard short of a first down. It'll be second and one. Watch the replay there. Does a little running pass to his right, or the left, throws it right-handed, and Mike Freedy, who wasn't uh, really sure he could play today, he's been banged up, gets a nine-yard gain on it. Indiana, second down and one. Minus finish to Indiana, 28. There's the, the full eye, a flag goes down, the whistle blows, and Indiana may have taken too much time. Or there could have been motion in one of the backs. It'll be against Indiana either way. Wait for the signal. There's not even any discussion with the Buckeye captains, so it must be a delay. Illegal procedure. The legal procedure is called against Indiana. There were, I think there was movement by one of those men in the eye formation. They used the full eye in that particular play, and one of the players moved. Second and six now. 
Ball is back at the Indiana 23. There's a ball handed off to Durazio, and they're going to get him at the 24-yard line. That was a bad connection, and uh, he didn't seem to have the ball in there, or he didn't want to let go of it uh, between uh, Durazio and uh, Timmy Clifford. And uh, by the time he did release it, uh, Al Washington was all over it. Looked like they nearly collided there on the handoff with a result that the play was slowed down and uh, Durazio could only get it to the 24-yard line. Now it is third and five. An instant ago, it was second and one. And there is movement by the Indiana interior lineman. Penalties now are killing uh, the Hoosiers. They've had four for 24 yards, but the Buckeyes have been penalized 55 yards five times. Change of last week. One of the linemen on the left side of the Indiana line moved before the ball was snapped, so a legal procedure is called against the Hoosiers. Probably John Taylor, the guard. See, yeah, there he is. Pulled up before the ball was snapped. Now it is third and nine for Indiana. Double coverage on Freedy, wide to the right. Clifford going back to pass. It, it is thrown and caught by Freedy, who got in between two Buckeye receivers. And that will be a first down. A careless defensive play there by Ohio State. Mike Gass and Vince Skelling is riding him all the way back to the 20, but it's too late. They've given him far much too room to roam, and Clifford finds him. And now you watch them riding him back. Here's the isolation on Mike Freedy. He runs a nice route, runs right behind Todd Bell, sets himself. Bell comes up and misses it. Now they ride him down. So Indiana gets a big first down there. Mitchell goes in motion to the left. Back to pass goes Clifford. Throws up field. It is incomplete. Off the fingertips of Mike Freedy at the Indiana 48 incomplete. Ellis defending for Ohio State. Second down and 10. The ball comes back to the Hoosier 31. Time a factor now. Two minutes and 19 seconds remain in the second period. Ohio State leading 19 to nothing. Jimmy Clifford's put the ball up 15 times, hit on seven of them for 53 yards, but they have not done any damage as yet. The nickel defense is in for Ohio State. As Fischl goes in motion to the left covered by Guess. There's a counter play. The ball is given off to Daring, and Daring is tackled at the 37 by Todd Bell. Todd never moved then, Marv. Uh, while they ran the counter or the quick reverse, Todd just held his ground, and the man ran right into it. You watch, Todd is just sitting there waiting. The guy did spin and get four yards. He may not have had otherwise, but Todd did make the stop. It is third and five for Indiana now. Clock running with a minute and 48 seconds left in the first half. Wide to the left is Freedy. To the right is Fischel. Clifford dropping back to pass. Bell rushes in. The pass is incomplete. And down goes Clifford. Well, they had a blitz coming two ways that time. Uh, Al Washington was going in from the right side, and they double teamed him and picked him up, and that left for Todd Bell to go in from the left, and he kissed Timmy Clifford pretty well. Indiana runs out of downs now, and they will have to kick fourth and five with a minute 35 remaining. The deep man for Ohio State is Mike Guess, and Levette will be kicking for Indiana. For the fifth time this half. Line of scrimmage, the Hoosier 37. There's the kick, a towering punt downfield, a dandy. Guess takes it at the 12, starts to the center of the field, now cuts to the far side, comes out to the 20, to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. He's at midfield, Guess at the 35, the 30, tackled at the 30-yard line. The only man back there who could get him got Mike Guess, but a dandy return. Well, they just ran right by him. Nobody decided they'd block him was a brilliant run back. Watch the replay now. Guess reverses himself, goes all the way across the field. 
He ran an awfully long way to shake Claire back around the 10. Boy, that was some run back then. And watch the escort there. Nobody picked him up. Everybody ran right by him, and he's got it down inside the Hoosier 30. Well, the Buckeyes have it at the Indiana 30-yard line now with a minute and 14 left. Schleister getting the ball, dropping back to pass, gets the protection, throws over the middle. It is incomplete. Look at Donnelly in the end zone. There isn't anybody except the goalpost close to it. Hicks was the intended receiver. It was incomplete. Ball comes back to the 30-yard line. One minute and eight seconds left in the second period. Ohio State leading 19 to nothing, and the Buckeyes, by virtue of that fine punt return by Mike Guess, are now in position to perhaps get another score. That was Donnelly, Williams, and Hunter are three wide receivers. Schleister stumbles as it goes back to pass, goes over the middle, caught by Donnelly at about the 16 or 17 yard line. First down, Ohio State. 12-yard pass to the 17. That run back by Mike Guess, incidentally, I got it 61 yards. I'll see what they do officially. That's some run back. That's the 15th first down for Ohio State now. The line of scrimmage is the 17-yard line. Hicks, Donnelly, and Williams, three wide receivers. Back to pass is Schleister. Has time, throws it upfield. It is incomplete. Threw it too high. Gary Williams, the intended receiver. Incomplete. Clock stops at 45 seconds in the second period. Forty-five seconds remaining in the first half. Second down and ten. The ball is at the Indiana 17. Forty-five seconds. All the time the Buckeyes had here. Schleister. On a draw play to Murray, and Murray is caught for a loss. Caught for a loss. Clock is running. And Ohio Schleister's trying to get time out. And they let it go down to 35 seconds. Schleister couldn't get the officials' attention. Come on, come on! Yeah, there they call it. Hart was running around <laughs> trying to get the attention of the officials. That's rather strange. They wouldn't be a little more observant. Earl Bruce scratching his head now and going over things with Bill Miles, who puts the headphones on to the press box. And they're going to have a little consultation with quarterback Arch Schleister. 35 seconds to go. And 17 uh, yards to the end. No, 21 yards to the end zone. And Corso is still pacing like the cage lion on the east side line. Incidentally, on the pass a moment ago on first down, the block that gave Art the time to do it, and a good one was thrown by Cliff Belmer, who was in at fullback. So we talked about the line blocking, uh, and it has been extremely good today. Those backs have been blocking awfully well. Yes, indeed. Third and 14 with 35 seconds left. The ball is now back at the 22. There's Lee Corso. Get the split screen, and on the left, Earl Bruce. Earl's Earl taking all kinds of frantic motion. <laughs> all right, third and 14 at the 22. Three wide receivers. Schleister fakes the draw, back to pass. Goes over the middle, it is caught, touchdown! Duck ball oh. in the end zone. Was that a catch by Doug Donnelly? And I'll tell you, the play looked like it stuttered going out just a little bit. There's the replay. Mark fakes it to Paul Campbell. And now he sets up. He's got good protection there. Look at him. Time to survey. Time to let Doug Donnelly shake behind the two defenders. Doug goes all out now, diving and catches the ball. Now he comes back. Now we're on a freeze cam. Freeze frame with Doug. Does the Z pattern. He's got the man beat. Now he's got behind two of them. Oh, that's a perfect throw. Right on the dough. 21-yard TD. That's the seventh touchdown pass by Art Schleister this year. Anakievsky in to try the extra point. There was some contact made in the line, and let's see what's wrong. One of the Indiana men 
made contact with uh, Tim Burke. Now they're, now they're going to change footballs. Well, that's an innocent way to get out of something. <laughs> Monikievsky will be trying it. Castagnola holding. It is set down. The kick is up and good. So, Ohio State shows that they can play opportunist football and they can move that football in a hurry. And Art Schleister took to the air and I mean he hit a dandy to Duck Donnelly in the end zone. There's Here it is again. Boy, does he have time to throw. There's some great blocking. He unloads it just as he gets hit and Donnelly has run a beautiful Z pattern behind the two deep men. And now we are isolated on Doug again. He goes right, now left, now back to his right again and just curls in behind them. And just as he's hit, Art Schleister lets the ball fly. Boy, that could not have been thrown better. Big didn't get the ball till it was a minute and 14 left in the second period. And in under a minute, they went 29 yards, five plays. Boy, that's efficient football. Art is five for 10 now, 114 yards. Donnelly has caught three of those for 80. And of course, the 21 yard, 21 yard touchdown just now. And all that was set up by that Excellent punt return by Mike Guess. Well, the ball blows off a tee, so Bob Atha will have to set it up again. It's rather windy today and chilly. There are your two deep receivers for Indiana, Daring and Johnson. Daring on the far side, Johnson on the near side. Atha approaches the ball and kicks it. Carries only to the nine-yard line. Daring takes it, angles to this side, and he is bent solidly at the 14-yard line. I think that's by Jim Scott Loughlin. Burris. Scott Burris. Jimmy Laughlin's jumping up and down like they oh, scored another Loughlin. touchdown. Well, they put most of it together at least for a half, Marv. The defense is playing every bit as well as the offense. We've got a man down now at uh, midfield, the Buckeye. I believe it's Cobb, it the is. fine uh, freshman, Glenn Cobb. The Mark Schleister's old school, Miami Trace. Buckeyes have had 43 plays unofficially in the first half. Indiana's had 30, so in 13 more plays than the Hoosiers have had, the Buckeyes have scored 26 points. Now Cobb comes off under his own steam. He's going to be a good one, Mark. Oh, he is indeed. He is a fine football player. Tall, rangy young man, and he really hits him. 24 seconds left now as Indiana lines up with three wide receivers. Hoosiers are down 26 to nothing. Clifford with a ball, hands it off to Hartrader. Big hole up the middle. Skillings beats him head on and brings him down at the 29-yard line. First down, Indiana with 19 seconds to go. Outside of uh, penalties, that's their biggest gain of the day. Well, we've got to give them a big gain on that punt that uh, bounced backwards and then into a Buckeye that they covered. But 15 yard run then by little Mike Parkrader. Clock is running, nine seconds left. This could be the last play of the first half. Clifford, taking a lot of time, gets the ball, hands it off to Lonnie Johnson, and he's hit solidly by Mark Sullivan, and that'll end it. The first half comes to an end, and I mean the Ohio State Buckeyes have been razor sharp. They lead 26 to nothing, and they have just overwhelmed Indiana. Just totally dominating. They've had 16 first downs to go with 26 points. Indiana's only had five first downs, really hasn't threatened at all. The Buckeyes, on the other hand, have only failed to score on one possession in this half. That's efficient football, that's a well-oiled offense, and the defense has been just as accurate. Well, fans, that's the end of the first half with a score, Ohio State 26, Indiana nothing. We'll be back with the start of the second half after this pause. It's Marv Holman with Kay Kessler from Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. We're ready to start play in the second half and the Ohio State Buckeyes have just devastated Indiana so far. This is as dominating as I've seen an Ohio State team for some time, and I, I know they're playing a team that a lot of people say isn't as good as its 4-1 record in the Hoosiers, but none
nonetheless, the Buckeyes have scored five of their six possessions for that 26 to nothing lead. They have dominated every department you possibly could dominate. They have 17 first downs to five for the Hoosiers. They have 327 total yards, Marv, against 108 for the Hoosiers. They've done it in 44 plays. That's eight yards a play. Indiana's had 28 yards. They're going about 3.6 yards a play. Individually, we ought to take a quick look. Uh, Rick Bolley running from the eye back, the tailback for the first time in a switch over the uh, past week, has carried the ball 89 yards, a career high in 12 carries. Paul Campbell has rushed for two touchdowns, 80 yards in, tw in 13 carries. Arch Schleister has 35 yards in seven. And Schleister has been perfect with a five of nine passing, 113 yards, one for a touchdown to Doug Donnelly. They just haven't missed a lick. This is a career high in rushing for Bali, and he's only played a half. Long kickoff goes to Lonnie Johnson, four yards deep in the end zone. He'll down it. Indiana will get it on a touchback at their own 20-yard line. So the Hoosiers now will get the ball first and 10 at their own 20, and we'll see whether the strategy changes any in the second half. Well, Indiana did come back against Iowa, wasn't it, in the uh, opening ball game very well in the second half. Uh, I think they were down something like 27 to nothing and came back and won the ball game. So this team can strike. Tim Clifford at quarterback is good. Wide to the left is Freedy, to the right is Fischel. First play of the second half as Clifford looks over a five-man defensive line, rolls to the right, back to pass, has the time, runs out of the pocket, Henson chases him out of bounds. Loss on the play. Clifford just couldn't find anybody open. Well, that's good coverage on the part of the secondary and good heat by Luther Henson, number 54. He gets credit for a two-yard sack there. We talked about Tim Clifford in the first half. The Buckeyes solved him. He was only 7 of 16 for 52 yards and really nothing damaging. Uh, he can hurt you. Uh, up to now, he has not been able to solve the Buckeye defense. Second down and 12 now. Back at the Indiana 18. Clifford with a long count. Gets the ball. Drops back to pass. Has the time. Throws it upfield. Intercepted by Mike Guess at the 38. He's tackled at the 38. So Indiana has... The roof fall in on him on the very second play from scrimmage as Guess intercepts. There's the replay. Good fake. Good protection. Really a bad throw, though. Mike Guess is right on the man. Played the ball very well. Leaped up. Get the interception at the 39-yard line. There you are on Tim Corso, or Scott Corso. Guess gives him the chuck and goes for the ball. High the Buckeyes in gear on the 39. Sleister. Dropping back, may run, may pass, is at the 40, going to run, and is hit and dropped out of bounds. Got about two yards there from the 39 to about the 37. Hart was a little hesitant about whether to pass or run, and then Indiana moved over nicely and kept the play pretty well jammed up. Well, you know... Uh Starting the ball game, Art ran a couple of options, one right, one left, and that really spread the defense and uh, presented all kinds of early problems for the Hoosiers, and it looked like this is what he wanted to do to start this half. Schleister with a second and eight at the 37, pitches the ball back to uh, Calvin Murray, and Murray hammers off right guard, and he's into the 31. Murray, the ball carrier. Stopped by Tim Wilbur. Third down and three, the line of scrimmage. You can hardly see it. I mean, Mark, Art's hands off are really becoming classic. 18 first downs. First and 10, Ohio State, the line of scrimmage, the 23. Donnelly goes in motion to the left as they overload the left side. The play hits back to the right. Campbell carrying, and Campbell barrels into the 17. Good block there by Tom Wall, but then that's been happening all afternoon. How that Buckeye line is blocking today. It has not been happening uh, in the last two ball games, however, and uh, here comes Paul limping to the sidelines now, along with Gary Williams. 
Chuck Belmer is the fullback. Volley is the eye back. Donnelly goes in motion to the left, second and three. Sleister hands off to Volley. Volley hammers off the left side. He's inside the 15. He's to the 14. Marty Young, big 252-pounder, makes the stop. Volley is the ball carrier. He is close to a first down, but all about a yard at most short. Cliff Belmer was the fullback that Volley followed then as Paul Campbell got a little rest. Paul's on his feet there at the side, though. He's okay. He's just probably a little frazzled. Wide to the left is Donnelly. Third down and one. The line of scrimmage, the Indiana 14. 26 to nothing. Ohio State just overwhelming Indiana today. Schleister with a long count. And there's a mix-up in the backfield. Schleister rolls out to the right. The whistle blows and action stops. Now we'll see what the violation is. Did Ohio State move first, or was Indiana offside? We'll see. The legal procedure against Ohio State, that's probably on Joe Lukens, the right tackle. Well, that's the sixth penalty, and that was the uh, Achilles heel of the Bucks last week, which really prevented them from doing anything destructive to Northwestern. That one hurts. Ohio State now penalized back to the 19-yard line. It is third down and a long six. To the right is Hunter as Donnelly starts in motion to the right. Sleister fakes the draw, back to pass, throws it in the flat, caught by Donnelly. Donnelly is at the 10, at the 9, stopped at the 9, and roughness is called on Indiana. Well, there's been a little bit too much of that, and this time they called it, and uh, Doug gets up, he's helped up. It's a pat, but there have been too many late hits, and it's just really not necessary. It's called on Tim Wilbur of uh, Indiana. Donnelly was down and out of bounds. Here we are again now. Good block there by Belmer as Art unloads to Donnelly. Wide open at the 15. Tries to do a little juking. Uh, that wasn't really quite that late, but uh, they did throw it, and this will make them think a second time. There were an awful lot of them in the first half. But that picked up the first down. That'll be half the distance now. The foul occurred at about the eight yard line, so it ought to go down to the four. Let's see if it does. Yes, sir, four yard line. Dwelly and Jaco are in there now at the tight end positions as a personal foul is called on Indiana, a roughness call. First and goal at the four, 26 to nothing. The Buckeyes lead, they're within four yards of still another touchdown. Now the officials want to confer. Belmer is the fullback as Donnelly goes in motion to the left. Volley hitting off right guard to about the one or the two. Call it the two. Volley the ball carrier ran that play right behind Ken Fritz. He's inside the two, and you're right, Kenny Fritz threw a nice block. Bill Jaco tried to peel back and get the other man, and he'd gone on in, but couldn't quite do it. Second and goal at the two-yard line. High formation as Tyrone Hicks goes in motion to the left. Schleister to Volley, touchdown off left tackle. Rick Volley goes in to score. Where Rick, he's leading Sherman. The whole ball club in the end zone. Picks the ball up, hands it to the official, tells the crowd we did it again. Boy, is he enthusiastic. So Ohio State leads 32 to nothing now, and Vladiana Kievsky, if he makes this extra point, will uh, set the all-time Ohio State record. Cliff Belmer leads the way right there for Rick Volley going over the left side. He gets a hit from the corner man, but knifes it on in the last two yards. That's 39 yards in eight plays, and Bali now is 95 yards in 15 carries. There's Anakievsky's extra point. It is good, and there is the record. That's 101 extra points now by Anakievsky, and that, of course, breaks uh, Tom Klavan's record of 100. So Anakievsky is the new extra point record holder at Ohio State. 33 to nothing. Ohio State leading, and K, the Buckeyes are about as sharp as a football team can be, except for the penalties. Except for the penalties. They've had six, but offensively and defensively, Mike Guess has done a fine job. That interception, of course, on Indiana's second play of the second half, 
put the Buckeyes on the 39-yard line, and in eight plays, they took it in. Rick Bolley did the last two yards of damage, and it becomes 33 to nothing. And the line blocking has been sharp. The tackling has been good. The coverage of the secondary has been good. And the pressure on the passer, as well as protection for Sleister, most of the way has been excellent. The Bucks have really put it together, at least for uh, two uh, and a fifth quarters. Bob Ethan now will kick off. There you see him teeing the ball up. Bob approaches the ball from about nine yards deep. There are the deep men for Indiana, Daring and Lonnie Johnson. Ethan's kick, a floater going downfield. It will be picked up by Lonnie Johnson at the three, and he's in trouble. They get him at about the 11-yard line. A difficult kick to handle, and Johnson was in trouble. You can't blame Johnson on that one. He doesn't know what to do. He thinks it's going to go out of bounds. It doesn't. He thinks it's going in the end zone, and he thinks, well, I better get it before the Buckeyes do. By that time, you mentioned it floated. Marv, it did, and he couldn't uh, do anything with it except make sure the Buckeyes didn't get it. Boy, are they in bad field position again. Bob Murphy was the first Buckeye down to make the tackle. So Indiana gets it first and 10 on the Hoosier 11. Clifford, who has gone all the way at quarterback, gets the ball on a draw play to Durazio. Stop holding. The entire middle of the line. Alvin Washington may have been the first one in there, but he had a lot of help. Tim Sawicki was there. You could expect that. And they're going to mark it back at about the seventh. There it is on the replay, and boy, is he met Alvin Washington almost single-handedly. That's four yards backwards. Second down, 14. Indiana's ball, back at the 13-yard line. Clifford dropping back to pass from his goal line, throws it upfield, it's incomplete. Over the head of Bob Stevenson, who was open, by the way, but he, uh, the pass was thrown a little bit too high. On the seat of his pants in the end zone, Timmy Clifford, where he's been very often in this ballgame. The Buckeye pressure on the passer has really been good. Boy, that's a dangerous pass. You're down 33 points. You're back on your seven-yard line, and you drop into your end zone to throw it. Then you throw it wild. Third down and 14. The nickel defense is in there for Ohio State now. Clifford again going to pass from his end zone. Throws a screen pass out in the flat. It's caught by Hartrader, who slips and falls at the five. But Mike Guess was there anyway. Mike Guess uh, slipped trying to make a cut when he saw the uh, screen set up. He slipped and fell on his keister. Then Hartrader tries to go the other direction. And when he tries to exchange abruptly, he goes down. Now you see the screen set up. Hartrader gathers in the high pass. Down went Guess. Down went Hartrader. Guess puts the tag on him. And so that one lost, uh, that one lost two. And now Larry Levette will have to kick from nine yards deep in his own end zone. Now he dare not step on that end line or it's an automatic safety. There's a good pass from center. Levette gets off a nice kick carrying downfield. It hits at the 35, bounces to the 40, bounces to the 45, oh, to midfield, and all the way back to the Buckeye 43-yard line. Make it the 44. That's a 52-yard punt. But I think about 20 of it was roll. It doesn't matter, pals. It's how it got there. It's where it is. Leister, Belmer, Murray, and Donnelly will comprise the Buckeye backfield. Despite the bounce, the Buckeyes still have excellent field position. They have had it most of the ball. Ball is at the Buckeye, 44, first and 10. Five-man defensive line for Indiana, 5-3-3 three, three defense. Leister. Dropping back to pass, gets good blocking, throws the bomb upfield to Donnelly, batted down, incomplete. Batted down by Wilbur Donnelly, the intended receiver. Well, I think he went for the ball. That looked like it might have been close to interference, but they both turned around going for the ball. I think Donnelly did get a little shove, but he's not complaining. Hart got some fine blocking as he went back to set up then. Good protection. 
second down and 10. The ball comes back to the Buckeye 44. Nine minutes and 31 seconds left in the third period. Ohio State winning 33 to nothing. Sleister pitches back to Murray. Murray off the right side at midfield. He's out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at the Indiana 49. Did you see that wall of blockers he had going around the right side there? That's what's made the Buckeyes go this ball game. Watch the escort he picks up here. Out of your screen, but boy, that is blocking. I think I could run behind that slower. Nine minutes, 27 seconds left here in the third period. Third and three at the Indiana 49. Donnelly in motion to the right. Pitch out goes to Murray. Murray off the right side. He's got a first down. Calvin Murray, the ball carrier. Will Height and Wilbur get him, and they're going to mark it at the Indiana 42 and a half. And that's the 20th first down. The Buckeyes continue to pile it up, continue to look very good offensively. Let's give a lot of credit to some of those Buckeye offensive coaches. That would be Glenn Mason, the guard and center coach, Bill Miles, the tackle and tight end coach, and, uh, of course, Wayne Stanley, the backfield coach. They've really got this offense sharp today. Pitch out to Murray. Murray off the right side, runs out of room, and he's belted out of bounds. Down goes one of the Buckeye trainers. That was Billy Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Sound all right, Coach. Put me in. Billy Hill lost his hat on that play. <laughs> he could have lost more. Yeah, that's right. Once again, Cal Murray had good blocking, but he used it very well. He's got swivel hips. I like him. I'm Second. glad to see him healthy. Murray. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Second and six at the Indiana 38. Schleister. Rolling left. Going to run. Is it the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20? He's down to the Indiana 15-yard line. Fine run by Art Schleister. He got a magnificent block from Rick Volley that it, it was pretty close to a clip. I'm not real sure. Let's watch him as he follows. Now, look at this blocking setup. Now, Rick's right out there in front of him. Now, he hit that guy high on the shoulder. <laughs> and that may have been a little clipping action. And Art made great use of it. He's got it down to the 14-yard line. That's 28 yards. They mark it at the Indiana 14. Calvin Murray is the eye back. Donnelly starts in motion to the left, which is the short side of the field. Schleister dropping back to pass. Is in trouble. Runs out of trouble. Throws it upfield. Into, er, no, it's caught. But that was tipped by a Buckeye, it wasn't it? It had to be. And I don't think you can do that. I think Hunter, did Hunter tip it? Well, I hope we have that on the replay. Donnelly's getting congratulations from Murray there. Now watch it. Art really almost gets murdered on this one. The guy's come in from the backside. He decides to run out of trouble. Now as he's about to, now watch it. It's tipped. That's tipped by Chuck Hunter. And now Donnelly makes a remarkable, oh, what kind of a catch was that? But I don't think that's legal, folks. You cannot be touched twice by, uh-uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. This guy's in the striped shirt, he didn't call it. First down at the three. First and goal at the three-yard line. Schleister, hands off, and there's a loss on the play. Good driving charge there by uh, Denver Smith, and he nailed Murray back at the six-yard line. A loss of three from the three back to the six. Doug Donnelly caught that ball flat on his back, reached out with one hand, controlled it, and pulled it to his body. And, and then it, he did it as he was doing a semi-somersault, and he came down and still held on to it. But Marv, still illegal. <laughs> you are so right. In motion is Tyrone Hicks. Schleister rolling left, may pass, may run, going to run. Touchdown, Art Schleister. What a run. And a great block by Cal Murray. Cliff Delmer and Cal Murray, 34 and 43, but Cal Murray's the one who got the block to let him go around the corner. Boy, there they've gone eight, uh, 56 yards in eight plays. Watch it now. There's 
Belmer out in front. Look at that block. It was Belmer's block at first that did it. There's Murray's at the end. Belmer's the one that sprung it free. And Sleester ran right for that flag and got in for the touchdown. An excellent run, 39 to nothing. Anikievsky trying the extra point, holding his Greg casting Nola. There's the kick. It's right straight down the middle. 40 to nothing and an almost unbelievable show for Ohio State today. This is a good Indiana football team. They came in here four and one, and they were feeling very sour about the one game that they lost because they felt they gave it away to Colorado 17 to 16. Indiana strongly felt that they should have been five and nothing, and that might well have been the case. But Ohio State has just destroyed them today. Well, this has got to be a very, really get the daughter down because the Buckeyes have just been almost perfect. Seven, eight possessions, seven scores. They've done it every way imaginable. And they're doing it without a lot of breaks on it. They're getting great blocking. They're getting great play selection. It's been every imaginable way. It's been Paul Campbell going through the middle. Art Schleister on the options. Rick Bolley through the middle. A touchdown pass to Donnelly. And... Complimenting all of that has been a fine effort by the defense, which up to now has thrown the shutout. Well, there are Indiana's two uh, deep receivers, Daring and Johnson. They've had a lot of practice today. Ohio State has kicked off most of the afternoon. 40 to nothing, Ohio State leading, and we're midway in the third quarter. Atha approaches the ball, boots it. It carries downfield to Daring. Three yards deep in the end zone. He drops it and then downs it. So Indiana will get it on a touchback. First and 10 at the Indiana 20. Look at this, Marv. Unofficially Campbell and Bali. Campbell has 94 yards. Bali 95. Each has carried 15 times. Five different Buckeyes have scored. Only Campbell and John Kievsky, of course, more than once. Tim Johnston keeping our statistics today. Dick Finn and Jim Barry doing the spotting as usual. Excellent. There is Fischel in motion to the right for Indiana. They overload the right side as Clifford goes back to pass, throws up over the middle. It is complete to Stevenson, and Stevenson gets short yardage to about the 26. That may have been Durazio. Yes, Durazio caught it. All the Indiana backs end in four. Oh, sure. If that isn't a nightmare, quarterback is 14, the tailback is 24, the fullback is 34, Johnson is 44, and the tight end is 84. Well, Tim has to go to the air now, down 40 to nothing. There's just no choice. He's going to screens at the moment. Second down and four. Clifford on a draw play to Hart Raider. Hart Raider's got a first down as he first through right tackle and gets it out to the 36. First down, Indiana. Todd Bell and Vince Skillings are there to make the stop. There is Hart Raider going to the sideline for Indiana. Tough little back. He's walking a little bit of a limp. Watch it here. Mike Hart Raider tucks that ball away. Nice blocking, actually. Good hit by Vince Skellings and then finally by Todd Bell. Todd is a hard hitter when he makes contact. Mitchell goes in motion to the left for Indiana. Clifford with the ball, drops back to pass. Throws one upfield. It's caught by Fischel. Fischel at midfield and is hit and dropped at the Buckeye 49-yard line by Todd Bell. Gave him a little bit too much time then to find his receiver. That's 14 more yards, really 15 into the Buckeyes, 49 got a lot of time here now on this one. Running to his left and fires. This was wide open. Bell makes a good solid shot there. First and 10 Indiana at the Buckeye 49. Official goes in motion to the right. There's a handoff to Durazio and he gets three yards to the 46 yard line. Ran the play at right tackle. They're spreading them out a little bit now. Screens to one side, a sweep to the other. And draw play with Hark Raider. This is the best 
the Indiana offense has looked in the entire ball game a little late, perhaps, but at least it is moving and blocking well. Mitchell to the right, Corso to the left for Indiana. That's Steve Corso, the coach's son. Clifford rolling right, going to pass. Now he's going to run and goes out of bounds at the 43. And he got hit way out of bounds a little bit late by Al Washington. No hard feelings, just hard hits. They're going to mark the ball at the 43 and a half yard line in Ohio State territory. Third down and about four and a half to go for a first down. Time running down here in the third quarter, but it's 40 to nothing in favor of Ohio State. It's only the second time, Marv, they've been across midfield in the ball game. Clifford on a quick handoff to Hart Raider. He's got a first down, bounces off a tackler, Todd Bell, and gets it out to about the Buckeye 35. Boy, that was good blocking on the left side, and Hart Raider knew where to go. Look at the blocks, wide open. Puts his shoulder right in here. He's a tough little monkey. That's an eight-yard pickup. It's only the second time they've converted on third down. Indiana's ball, first and ten now. Well, Skelly's on the shot. But you see Hart Raider bounce right off of it. Skelly's has to pursue him. Official goes in motion to the right. Back to pass is Clipper. Goes one out in the flat. It's caught by Fischel, and then they get him right away at the 31-yard line. Mike Guess is there to stop it. He went over him like a lawn roll. The 67th straight sellout crowd here at Ohio Stadium, 87,521 looking on. An overcast, chilly day. Breezy right now. Good baseball weather. Ah, that's good. Mitchell goes in motion. Clifford on a quick handoff to Durant or Johnson and Johnson hammers into about the 26 or 7 where Alvin Washington is there to get him. Lonnie Johnson came into the game as our leading ball carrier, but the Buckeyes uh, have corked him up reasonably well today. Ball is at the 26 and a half yard line. Third down, about two feet to go for a first down. Park Raider, Durazio, and Lonnie Johnson in the backfield. There's the full eye formation. Clifford with a ball, hands it off to Hark Raider. Hark Raider is caught for a loss. That's Keith Ferguson, isn't it? Yes, Keith Ferguson was there, and Tim Sawicki also moved over from the middle guard spot. They not only didn't get the two feet, they lost a good yard on the play. Now it is fourth well, They lost more than that. Now look, look where they put the ball. Really, it's only less than a yard loss, but uh, Keith Ferguson uh, put more on it than that. So it's fourth, and I'm sure they'll go with that elk and I again. Long count, Clifford with a ball, options, pitches it off to Hart Raider, and he's caught for a loss. They didn't get it. Mike and I think it. Ohio State might have had 12 men on the field. You see a yellow handkerchief. That's the important thing. Here's isolated now on Park Raider. Gets the quick flip back now from Clifford, who gets collared. Now watch Mike Guest play this. Does a nice job on it. He just rides him right out of bounds, and he's a yard, two yards short. And indeed, you called that one right, Marv. Mark Sullivan went in, but nobody went out, and that just isn't quite kosher. So, Indiana, unable to gain against the 12-man defense, will now get a 5-yard penalty. No, 15-yard penalty. Wow. And the penalties, again, have been the only... I don't understand this. We're going to have to get another call on that. Was it indeed 12-man? I didn't see a 6. He's 
telling Jimmy Laughlin now that there were 12 men on the field, and uh, they're penalizing Ohio State all the way down to the 14-yard line. Mark Sullivan went in on a, on what would be a, like a goal line defense, but nobody came out. And there the Buckeyes had him stopped on fourth down, but the penalty lets them out of the trap. Clifford from the 14-yard line has a first and 10. Pitches the ball back to Hart Raider. Hart Raider eludes the tackle, and he skids out of bounds at the 8-yard line. Hart Raider, the ball carrier. Durable little guy. Well, this is a good test for the Buckeye defense. It's a nice luxury you can be able to test it when you're up 40 to zip. I'm sure that this doesn't make Denny Frizzell happy, but he'd like to see what their goal line defense looks like. Very quickly, he may find out. The only thing that has marred a super performance by Ohio State today would be the penalties. And there have been a lot of them. I think we're up to seven now, or is it eight? Nine last week. Clifford gets the ball, hands it off to Hart Raider. Hart Raider up the middle. He's all the way to the two-yard line. And that'll be a first down for Indiana. There's Mar ten. Marcus Merrick stops the play, but Hart Raider appears to have a first down at the two. Watch Mike change his direction right here. He forces it right back across the seam into the middle before Marcus Merrick, with help from Ray Ellis, and I think guess on the backside. Now you test that goal line defense. Yes, sir. Uh, we're having a little consultation. Indiana out of the huddle. Clifford hands that ball off to Hart Raider, and he does not get it. He is upset at about the one. Yeah, but he tumbled in, and, uh, boy, that's pretty vicious in there in the trenches right now. Mar Marcus Merrick, Jimmy Laughlin. Going to mark it at the one-yard line. Denny Frizzell is down there signaling something curiously. Now you see Denny coming into the picture. He's the defensive coordinator, and he does not want his team scored on. Shutouts are one of the major goals of the defense, the major goal. On the one-yard line, Clifford calling signals. Gets that ball, hands it off to Hart Raider, and he doesn't get it. They've got him wrapped up at the one-and-a-half-yard line. Merrick on top, but somebody way underneath the pile getting up right at the moment is Tim it's Sawicki. Alvin, Alvin Washington and Jim Laughlin was also there. Tim Sawicki was in on it. I think Tim Submarine, watch him underneath, and he'll get him by the feet. There's Todd Bell in the back, with Sawicki below. Everybody eventually... The ball is back at the two-and-a-half-yard line third now. Third down, and this Buckeye defense really digging in. Clifford is the quarterback, gets that ball. Options going to run. He's close, but I don't think he has it. Well, yes, he there they say touchdown. Touchdown by Tim Clifford of Indiana. So the Hoosiers get up on the scoreboard now. It is 40 to 6. Watch, this is the first play that Clifford carries the ball when he really wanted to. The other times he's carried it, he had to run for his life. Now, he, I don't know how he got in there. I certainly can't see, but he must have squirmed through. Nobody complained. 80 yards in 14 plays, Marv. That shows you a little bit about the courage of this team. They came back down 40 to nothing and put on a very good offensive drive. Steve Straub will be in to try the extra point for Indiana. Indiana lining up, Ohio State lining up to try to block it. Ball is set down, they're going to run for it, and they do not get it. Now Washington. Todd Bell messed that one up. Brent DeVolt was the holder. He picked up the ball and tried to run for it, and they caught him back at the... Three or four yard line. Watch the cornerback, Todd Bell, 25. Oh, look at him come up there. Did he smell that one out? Excellent play. Good skilling to come in and run him wide, and Todd came up to meet him, and it wasn't even close. So while the goal line defense finally yielded on third down, Marv, when they got the two-point conversion, they had it solved very well. 40 to 6 now. Ohio State on top, but Indiana will be kicking off to the Buckeyes. Here's that two-point try again. 
the bolt, takes the snap from center, the kicker fakes the kick, picks the ball up, coming around the backside skillings, but up front is Todd Bell, and they really foiled it back on the floor. Tyrone Hicks and Gary Williams are the two deep men for Ohio State. Steve Straub is the Indiana kicker. Ball is resting at the 40-yard line as uh, Williams and Hicks go deep. 57 seconds remain in the third period, and we've had 46 points scored, but the significant thing is 40 of them have been scored by Ohio State. There is the kick, a short one going downfield. Hicks will allow the ball to bounce, takes it at the 10, comes to the 15, to the 20, the 25, gets out to the 30, tackled at the 31. Tyrone Hicks returns it. Greg Castagnola comes in at quarterback for Ohio State. He'll be directing the attack. We'll have some reserves in there now. Well, I hope we do. We've got a full 15 minutes left of the fourth quarter, 51 seconds of this, and it's a good opportunity to get some of the down the liners a little bit of action. They haven't had it in five victories, Marv. They've not had the luxury of letting the reserves get much action. No, they haven't. Belmer is the fullback. Castagnolo with the ball, options to the left, gonna run with it. He's at the 30, he's at the 35, he's tackled at the 36. Greg Castagnola, the ball carrier, a senior from Trenton, Michigan. Denver Smith, 246 pound sophomore from Dayton. Number 68, the middle guard for Indiana, makes the tackle. Now that's pretty much the second unit. We got uh, the Andrew in at guard. Tim Brown is in now at one of the tackles. Second down and four. Castagnola pitches back to Calvin Murray. Murray fights to get to the 38-yard line. Wasn't much blocking on the left side. And uh, Murray had a tough time picking up any yardage. There's the gun, and that ends the third quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, the score is Ohio State 40, Indiana 6. We'll be right back with the start of the fourth quarter after this brief pause. This is the Ohio Public Broadcasting Network. It's Marv Holman with Kay Kessler. We're ready to start the fourth quarter of play, and Ohio State holds a commanding 40 to 6 margin. It'll be third down and two, Ohio State's ball on Ohio State's 38-yard line. Rick Castagnola is the Buckeye quarterback. As Hicks starts in motion to the left, Castagnola gives off to the first man through, but a flag is down. Belmer is the ball carrier. He is tackled at the 40, short of the first down, but on top of that, a flag is down. Well, we got about five flags down. It's It'll against be, the Bucs. Yeah, it's against Ohio State again. Those inevitable penalties. I think that must be about nine, if I'm not mistaken. Tying last week's record. He was short of the first down, however, and they may uh, refuse it. Indiana will refuse the penalty because they don't want to give Ohio State another down. So this will bring up a fourth down situation. They're a yard short. And for the second time today, Tom Orris comes in to kick. Orris is probably rusty. He hasn't done much today. Line of scrimmage is the 40-yard line. Indiana lining up to block the kick. They're lining up off sides, too, Mark. And the... Fl uh, the whistle blows, a flag is dropped, and I would gather delay of the game will be called against Ohio State, but let's see. Almost as if they were trying to draw them off sides. There's a discussion out there. The flag was dropped. The illegal procedure is called against Ohio State. This will move them back five more yards. 
And the illegal procedure is an unusual one. Several of the interior linemen were wearing illegal numbers. That's right. They did not get the pullover jerseys on. So we're back to the 35. Morris will be doing the punting. It's a good snap from center. It's off a low kick going upfield. It takes a lateral bounce and goes out of bounds at the Indiana 33. I'd have sworn that Indiana jumped off sides on that one, too. But the official is not swearing with me. He's swearing at me. So the Indiana Hoosiers will get the football first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. And we're just starting play here in the fourth quarter. Wide to the left is Fischel, to the right is Freedy. 87,521 fans looking on. Clifford gets the ball, drops back to pass, is rushed, eludes a tackler, runs to the left, is being chased, and goes out of bounds. Cobb was chasing him at the far sideline, and Clifford ran out of bounds. I'm glad to see Cobb back in there. He was hurt in the first half, and now he... Had great lateral pursuit there, and Clifford wanted no part of him, and he ran out of bounds. It's an awfully long way to get two yards. And Cobb did a nice thing. He could have pushed Clifford, but instead he grabbed him and uh, kept him on his feet. I think two yards, that, to run that far for two yards is better than to run that far for a headache. Clifford with the ball, rolls to the right, drops back to pass, the rush is on, the pass is thrown, it's caught by Freedy. Falling catch. Going to be close to a first down as it's marked at the Indiana 43, and that should be a first down, but we may have a measure. I'm glad he caught it. That may have been close to interference, but I don't think so, because if it was interference, it becomes a first down. Might hit him just about the time it is the 11th first down. Now you see Freedy isolated, running... Past guest stops, turns around, comes back. Guess hits him a little bit close. First and 10 at the Indiana 43. Clifford with the ball, hands it off to Daring. Daring hits into the middle, and he's down to the 49. DeAndrea and Guess make the tackle. Mike DeAndrea is the outside linebacker on the left side. A little late getting cranked up, but the Hoosiers indeed are moving the football but against the uh, sprinkling of Ohio State Reserves right now. The secondary uh, has Schwartz in there. Mike Bobby Guess uh, is about the only regular I see in there. Right. Official goes in motion to the left for Indiana. There's a handoff to uh, uh, Lonnie Johnson. Johnson spins off a tackler and gets it to the 40. That'll be another first down for Indiana. Ben Lee makes the stop for Ohio State. Uh, Mike Guess indeed is the only regular in there at the moment, Mark. Gary Doolin back at tackle, though, has been a regular until injury took him out, and then Jerome Foster came on very strong. Hard to unsee. First and 10 for the Hoosiers at the Buckeye 40. Official goes in motion to the left. There's a counter play. The ball is given off to the wing back. Daring and Daring gets good yardage down to the 31-yard line, and that will be a yard short of a first down. I think Daring tripped over the 35-yard line. Watch him. Nice counter play here. I don't know who hit him. That's the 35-yard line he tripped over for Pete's sakes. Second down and a yard. Line of scrimmage to 31. That's in Buckeye territory. It's called Daring Dittman. There is Daring hitting into the middle. He's got a first down to the Buckeye 28. Mike DeAndrea, a sophomore from Akron, makes the tackle. DeAndrea is number 96. Hey, Indiana's uh, hung on to the football now since uh, midway in the third period when the Buckeyes made it 40 to nothing with 7-14 left. Until this point, Ohio's only had the ball for three plays. Remember last week, they had a 92-yard march and 23 plays and didn't score. 92-yard march to nowhere, but they kept the ball for 12 and a half minutes. 
There's Lonnie Johnson, finds a hole and gets it down to the 22. Tom Blinko, right side linebacker, makes the stop for Ohio State. Blinko is number 29. And the ball is running around all by itself down there like a Mexican jumping bee. Garrow comes in at one of the linebacker spots now for Ohio State. Second, the whole ball game. Second down and three. This Daring hitting into the middle, fighting for the first down as he gets it to the 16-yard line. Gary Doolin and Reggie Nichols are the two tackles bringing down. Here comes Jerome Foster and Luther Henson back into the game. A new set of tackles for Ohio State, and they are the regulars. And Denny Frisell doesn't want another touchdown on the board if he can help. First down and 10 for the Hoosiers. The line of scrimmage, the Ohio State 16-yard line. That ball off to Daring, fumbles the ball, Ohio State recovers. Luther Henson made the hit, Marv. Buckeyes recover a fumble. Mike Guest got the ball, but Henson knocked it loose. Well, you see what happens when he put the regulars back in. Now watch him try to slice over his own right tackle. Luther Henson strips him of the ball. It's first forward. Mike Guest, the only regular in the secondary. Look at him dive on it. And he hugs it. Buckeyes have it at their 11. All right, Ohio State will get the football, first and 10 at the 11-yard line after recovering an Indiana fumble. Casting Nola, Belmer, Murray, and Hicks comprise the backfield. Casting Nola is the quarterback. Pitches the ball back to Murray. Murray tries the right side, comes out to the 15-yard line. Guess has got an interception and a fumble. He's, He's played a pretty fine ball game, a 61-yard punt return. He's done yeoman work today. Actually, the entire Buckeye team has just played excellent football. They really have. Mike's played a lot tighter on the man, uh, on the receiver, too, than formerly. Uh, He's had a superb ball game. Todd Bell's tackling in the secondary has been very sharp. At the 15-yard line, Hicks goes in motion to the left. Castagnola with the ball, hands it off to Belmer. Belmer's got a big gain. He's at the 30, the 35, the 40, and he's out of bounds. Fine run by Cliff Belmer and a good block downfield by Tyrone Hicks. 25, 27-yard run, and watch Cliff Belmer run right out of the arms of the linebacker. Reverses his field here. Great block by Ty Hicks. Whoa, was that a honey? He changes positions with the ball and finally gets hemmed in at the sidelines, but he's out to the 42. That's 27 yards for Cliff Belmer. And that's nice to see Belmer running again. He's the man that had that serious motorcycle accident a couple of years ago, and they didn't know whether he'd play any more football. There's a handoff to Murray, who juggled the handoff and uh, got it back to the 43-yard line. The exchange from casting Nola to Murray was not clean, and as a result, Murray was juggling the ball as he hit into the line. Big Denver Smith, number 68, the nose guard, went up over the top. He's the guy with the black high-top shoes. You don't see that very much anymore. He's a man in the middle with the black high-top shoes, and he's mad because he didn't make the hit, or the tackle, I should say, the stop. I'll say this, he fills out that uniform pretty well. <laughs> Second down and nine. Line of scrimmage, the 43 in Buckeye territory. Casting Nola on a draw play to Murray. Murray up the middle. He is wrapped up at the 46-yard line. He didn't have many places to go then, but he did stick his head down and knife in there. Tony Mahalik stopped the play for Indiana as they spotted at the Buckeye 46. Rick Folley comes in at the eye-back position and out goes... There Calvin we are, Murray. Murray. There's the man in the black shoes, number 68, Denver Smith. Third down and five. 
Castagnola pitches the ball back to Volley. Volley hammers into the middle. Is stopped short of the first down at midfield. One of the few times the Bucks have been stopped on third down. They were 7 of 10 until their last two attempts. Indiana's been unsuccessful. Only 3 out of 10. Rick Volley wants Ohio State to go for it, but the kicking team comes in, so amidst booze, 40 to 6, and the fans want more. Tom Morris comes in to kick. Line of scrimmage is the 50-yard line. Fourth down in the yard. Indiana lining up to block the kick. Nine men are up front. High pass from center. Rushes on. Orris gets off a tremendous kick that will hit at the one-yard line and is down. They down it at the one-yard line. A perfect kick. A letter-perfect kick by Tom Orris. And Filmer is hurt. Doesn't that kind of punctuate the day, though, Marv? Everything has been going absolutely letter perfect. Even the goal line defense that a penalty hurt. And now you get a great punt. Cliff Belmer. Oh, he's on his feet. That way. Billy Hill's got him up for Cliff says, I'm all right. You're not getting me out of there now, fans. I'm back in. Throws one up field, it is incomplete. Murphy was dropping back on pass defense, and he had a fair shot at the ball. Fischel was the intended receiver. Except that uh, poor Bob had his back to the whole play, and it was a little awkward to turn around. And with the score 40 to 6, it's still 8 to play, Marv. A good many of this 67th straight home sellout, 87,521, are wending their way homeward before the heavens open up. Well, they have seen some show by Ohio State today. Absolute privilege. One lone running back, that's Durazio, back there for Indiana. Clifford with a long count, gets the ball, rolls back to the right. Doolin's chasing him. Clifford runs out of the end zone and then is knocked out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Ooh, Cobb rode him out, and I thought for a moment that Clifford was doing the split, but he's okay. Good quarterback. He's not getting protection, or let's put it the other way, the Buckeye offensive front is really putting the heat. Watch Gary Doolin, number 60, get pursuit. Now, Gary is about 252, and he can't quite catch up, but by darn Glenn Cobb, the freshman did. And look at the splits. Cobb has excellent agility. Third down and five, the line of scrimmage, the seven-yard line in Indiana territory. Seven minutes and 54 seconds left. Indiana just did get the 12th man off the field. Fischel goes in motion. Back to pass goes Clifford, throwing from the end zone. It is intercepted by Ohio State. Brian what, a, what an interception by Schwartz. Brian Schwartz, he's been waiting a long time to get into action. The kid from California, watch this now. We're back into his end zone, and he uncorks the thing over the receiver's head, but not over Brian Schwartz. He had to go a second time to get that ball. Excellent effort by Brian Schwartz. All right, the Buckeyes will get the football. First and 10 in the line of scrimmage will be the Indiana 27 by virtue of that interception. Nola's in at quarterback. He has been playing the entire fourth quarter. The blitz is on. The ball is pitched back to uh, Murray, and Murray hits in there to about the 23-yard line. Ramsey, Rowe, and Evans are there to make the tackle for Indiana. They mark it at the 22 and a half. Second down and about six. Well, the reserves have been wanting action, and they're getting it, Meyer. That was the second uh, team defense in there then uh, that took the ball away from them. Brian Schwartz doing the honors. Castagnola sends Tyrone Hicks in motion to the left. Castagnola with a ball on the option. Uh, there's a handoff in there, and Denver Smith makes the stop. Cliff Belmer, the ball carrier, and he's into about the 20. Six minutes and 53 seconds remain. Third down and two at the Hoosier 20. 40 for Ohio State, six for Indiana. 
it has been all Buckeyes today. Casting Nola, rolling right, going to run, 20, 15, tackled at the 15-yard line, first down Ohio State. Kevin Kenley moves over to make the tackle, but not before Casting Nola has the first down at the 15-yard line. That's 24 first downs. The Buckeyes are just dominating every statistic you can possibly dominate. To the right is Gary Williams. To the left is Tyrone Hicks. Bolly is the eye back now. The ball is given off to Belmer. Belmer slams off right tackle to the 12-yard line. Walden and Evans beat him at that point. What do you think, Marv? I'm not sure how good this Indiana ball club really is, but it came in here 4-1, and one, and it also came in here 2-0, and oh, tied for first in the Big Ten, and the Buckeyes have absolutely taken it apart. Don't you think a lot of it is a certain amount of embarrassment on the part of Ohio State from last week? They didn't play well, and they knew it. They didn't, and then they depart. Second down and seven, line of scrimmage to Hoosier 12. The pitch back goes to Bali, caught for a loss, back at the 15-yard line. Ken Ball, giant 270-pounder from Cincinnati, makes the stop. Now we'll see let Greg Castagnola passing. This is too bad for uh, Rick. He was having a fine ball game, and he ran into uh, Cliff Belmer, who somehow got turned around going backwards. Uh, Roy Regals uh, did something like that a couple of decades back. Yeah, but he had the football. Well, Cliff wanted a football, and Dad Vernon, uh, Rick wasn't going to give it to him. Third down at 11. The six goes in motion. Casting Nola back to throw his first Thank forward you. pass. Throws it. It is caught. Short of the first down. At the six-yard line by Gary Williams. Little bit short of a first down by about a yard. Well, the pass is just, I think, underthrown a little bit, but Greg got good protection here. Now, he rifles that thing in there. And it's, well, it had to be that low to be caught, though, because otherwise uh, he may have been interfered with. But at any rate, pass for nine yards to Williams sets up a fourth and one. I think they'll punt here, Kay. Well, they might drop. How about a drop again, Marv? I haven't seen one of those either since Roy Regals was here. <laughs> Fourth down and one, the line of scrimmage, the six-yard line. Hicks goes in motion. And a flag is dropped. A delay. A delay a game. Fastic Nola was way too slow in getting the play underway. Well, that changes things. That penalty's been changing a lot of things, but the Buckeyes have been so bad for good this ball game that they've overcome that. That's only the seventh for 73 yards, seven for 73, but Indiana has refused a couple, and now Castagnola takes time out, and he says, now that we quit, it becomes fourth and six back on the 11. We got four minutes, four seconds left in the ball game. What do you suppose Earl's? Earl and Bill Miles are cooking up down there with their fine senior. Greg Castagnola, Marv, I think is an excellent backup quarterback. He's a bright kid, he's got a great sense of humor, he's got a trigger mind. Uh, he does an awful lot of things. Yes, and you remember he has come through for Ohio State on a number of occasions. You remember that dramatic touchdown pass he threw against Oklahoma? Oh, wasn't that something? That was one of the great ball games I have ever seen in this stadium, I'll tell you. It wasn't a victory, but it was certainly a tremendous football game. Now on the other sideline, you see Lee Corso and his defensive strategists uh, plotting something. They don't want any more points on the board against them. They really had a fine first half of the season. You realize we're into the second half of the season here? Well, Cal Murray's going in for Rick Bolley at the eye back. And so it's down to fourth and four. And the fans scream out. And the great Buckeye band is doing its sloopy number. There you go, Marv. Wide to the right is Tyrone Hicks. Fourth down and six at the 11-yard line. Murray goes in motion also. Passes thrown. Touchdown! Tyrone Hicks in the end zone. No, it's a... Uh, uh, yeah! Touchdown! <laughs> the Hoosier, Mark Longshore, has the football, and now we have a heated battle ensuing. Longshore has the football, but they called it the touchdown to Hicks. 
Here it is in the replay now. Let's see. I do think Hicks had the ball momentarily long enough for the touchdown. That's all you need, possession. He's got it. No, he doesn't. Longshore has got it off the ground. But, indeed, Hicks had the ball going over the goal line, and there isn't much question. Lee Corso is hot about it. You'll see this one later. Seven plays, 27 yards. The Buckeyes have done it again. Anikievsky in to try the extra point. It is set down. The kick is up, and it's good. Right down the middle. 47 to 6. And Ohio State is just taking Indiana apart. Well, I feel sorry for Indiana, but I'm so proud of the Buckeyes because they are doing everything imaginable right today except getting plays off on time. Let's see it again. Rick gets good protection here. Just as he's racked, he lets it go. Ty Hicks makes a magnificent catch. Look at the possession there now. He had it for a good two seconds. Goes to the ground. It doesn't matter if the long short picked it up off the ground. Hicks had the ball going over. 47 to 6 now as Indiana prepares to receive a Bob Apa kickoff. Apa's leg will be tired by the time this game is over. Well, I'm pleased for casting goal, I'm pleased for Hicks, and I'm pleased for the whole second unit because they worked to get the football, the defense did, Brian Schwartz intercepted it. Ty Hicks got the touchdown on a fine pass from Greg casting goal. The Buckeyes are doing it all and doing it very well today, Marv, as they go 3-0 and continue on top, probably with Michigan in the Big Ten race and the only unbeaten team in the Big Ten. Al Christie from nearby Westerville, Ohio, is one of the deep men. The ball is kicked downfield. It is dropped, picked up now by Galloway, who starts upfield, and he's brought down at the about the seven-yard line. Not much of a return. Galloway dropped the ball and then just couldn't pick it up. And Ernie Epitropoulos is downfield to make the stop. They're going to mark it at the seven-and-a-half-yard line. His knee is down on the ground, and uh, the thing, the futility, the utter futility of the day for Indiana is certainly punctuated by that one. All right, Clifford, or Chad Huck is in there at quarterback now, making his first appearance. Huck with the ball, gives it off to the eye back, and he's smacked right at the seven-yard line. No gain at all. Daring the ball carrier, Tony McGarro makes the stop for Ohio State. No gain at all, so it is second down and Tony 10. Tony McGarrow, number 90, takes him head on and just puts his nose down. Daring and Lonnie Johnson comprise the backs in an eye. Chad Huck is the quarterback. Huck with the ball, pitches it back to Daring. Daring around the left side is brought down by Epitropolis. And this one, it's John Epitropolis. There are twins on the Buckeye team, John and Ernie Epitropolis of Warren. They're both juniors, logically. Third and seven. Line of scrimmage is the 10-yard line. John Locked. Jr. and Ernie Jr. Mark. <laughs> Huck with the ball, gives it off to Daring, Daring up the middle, he's got a first down and room to spare as he comes all the way out to the 24-yard line. Ben Lee makes the stop for Ohio State, along with Rod Gorley, a freshman from Cincinnati. Watch it, Derek. He's running for the 15th first down of the ball game for the Hoosiers, but they've only got six points. Pretty fine run by Daring. Swings out of the huddle, wide to the left is Steve Corso, to the right is Fischel. Up with the ball, gives it off to Daring, Daring tries the left side and he's out to the 28 or 9 yard line, we'll wait for them to unpile. Ron Miller of Auburn, New York makes the tackle for Ohio State, number 91. No traffic jams today, Marv. on your way to Pittsburgh, won't you? Yes, you're right about that, okay. Second down and six at the 29-yard line. 
One minute and 40 seconds left in this football game. The ball is pitched back to, uh, and I don't know who it is, number 28. He didn't want it, I'll tell you that, whoever it was. Galloway, it was, and with that, Galloway goes out. Galloway doesn't want the football. Ball is at about the 29 and a half yard line, third down and five. I got some pretty impressive Buckeye offensive statistics I'll give you when we get a second, Mark. Futures out of the huddle. Chad Huck is the quarterback, gives it off to Christie. Christie up the middle, finds a hole, gets it to the 40, fumbles! Big scramble, Ohio State falls on it, but now had the whistle blown it dead. That's the question, and I think it had. Al Christie out of Westerville North getting his chance here in Ohio Stadium. The Hoosiers do retain possession. That's a good run for Christie. How about those statistics? All right, let's take a look at a couple of quick ones. Arch Schleister, a quarterback, was 7 for 12, 136 yards in a touchdown. He also ran 71 yards in 10 carries. Paul Campbell scoring two touchdowns, 94 yards in 15. Rick Bolley, one touchdown, 96 yards in 17. Give you a couple more in a minute. Back to pass goes Huck, throws one, it is caught. And the stop is made at the 49-yard line. Brett DeVault caught the ball. And then Doyle Lewis, a freshman from Canton, Ohio, makes the tackle for Ohio State. That's the 16th Indiana first down of the game, but that is purely academic at this point. 47 to 6, Ohio State winning big with 15 seconds remaining. Time for one, perhaps two more plays. Huck with the ball, drops back to pass, throws one over the middle, caught by Steve Corso, who drops the ball, scramble for it, and they're going to roll it incomplete. They say Corso never had it. And Steve Corso is hurt, Marv. He really got cut in two on that one. Epitopoulos is trying to help him up, but oh, was he hurt. Well, that's too bad. Yes, one sir. second to go, and you have an injury. That's a shame. That is a shame. He really got hit in the midsection. His dad over there is telling the ball club what to do, and he hasn't seen uh, Steve out there at the moment. The now Indi he looks on anxiously. Those are the Indiana trainers uh, working on Steve Corso, who was hit hard as the just as the ball got to him, a perfectly timed well, They can't do anything. Play. They're trying to run a play, but uh, a couple of more quick ones here as they work on uh, Steve Corso, Marv. Uh, Calvin Murray in a reserve role today because uh, Rick Volley did such a fine job making the transition from fullback to uh, tailback or eyeback. Here's the replay. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute as he catches this pass, and you watch the hit he gets here. Fine throw, fine catch, and he gets it right in the middle. That is a shame. Doug Donnelly caught, well, I started to say Cal Murray, getting the chance to rest, and he did come in to show his injuries okay. He got 40 yards and 13. Doug Donnelly, five catches, 102 yards, a touchdown. Last play of the game now, barring a penalty, Chad Huck from the 49-yard line, dropping back to pass, throws one out in the flat. It is caught, and the man is tackled immediately. That's it. The football game is over, and the Indiana Hoosiers have been defeated decisively today, 47 to 6. Mark Fischel caught the last pass, and by the way, that is another first down for Indiana, their 17th all told. But it's an overwhelming victory for Ohio State, who just totally dominated Indiana on offense, on defense, on blocking, on tackling, you name it, the Buckeyes had the edge. Even in the kicking game, Marvin, they did it from the opening whistle. They won the toss and they got the football and went for a touchdown. They went 85 yards in nine plays. Paul Campbell, two yards, and that was the first of two for him on a really great day. They scored a field goal. Janikowski, 32 yards. The next time they got the football, then they got a screwy thing on a punt that hit them and they didn't ever gain possession of it. The next time they got the ball, Janikowski, a 35-yard 
field goal. And then Paul Campbell, a three-yard touchdown run. Doug Donnelly, a 20-yard touchdown pass from Schleister. Five scores in six first half of possession is 26 to zip. The second half they started off just as well. Touchdowns the first two times. The first volley on a two-yard run. The second Arch Schleister on a six-yard sweep. Finally the second unit wraps it all up when Greg Castagnola hits Ty Hicks with a 15-yard pass. Set up when Brian Schwartz of the second defensive unit made an interception. Offensively absolutely picture perfect great blocking up front also in the backfield defensively could have been a shutout the second unit went in and uh, indiana marched down the field good goal line stand only penalties hurt him today marv yes and again i come back to the blocking of the line uh, it just hasn't been much better for a long long time the blocking of uh, of tom wall of ernie andrea of tom fritz uh, of course, uh, Lukens a tackle, Burke a tackle, they all seem to do a job, and even the, blo the backs block so well. Uh, I think I was greatly more impressed by the blocking of Paul Campbell in front of Ibach, new Ibach, Rick Bolley, and then Rick Bolley when Campbell was carrying the ball. Both of them when Schleister was running the option. Both of them when Schleister was dropping back for pass protection. And they really did an excellent job. I think they put it all together today, Marv, as well as I've seen them do it. And let's don't downgrade Indiana. They're 4-2. They're 2-1 in the Big Ten. They're not a bad football team. They came from way back, 27 points down against Iowa, won that ball game. So don't knock Indiana. This was just a real solid football victory today for the Buckeyes. It's almost incredible to compare the Ohio State team today with the one that played last week against Northwestern. But of course, that's the thing that makes sports so interesting. You cannot take anything for granted. You never know what to expect. And uh, certainly Ohio State proved that today because they just absolutely destroyed Indiana. I think Indiana sadly paid for the sins of the Buckeyes against Northwestern. The Bucks weren't going to do it two weeks in a row. They said all of them to a man last week. Arch Leister was sick. He thought he played a terrible ball game. A number of them did, all except Paul Campbell. 113 yards a week ago, he was the whole offense. But I'll tell you, they all paid Indiana back today. They were superb. So that's it for another Ohio State football game. Join us next week when the Ohio State Buckeyes take on the Badgers of Wisconsin. The executive producer of Ohio State football is Stephen Gordonstein. Producer director is Edwin Clay. Assistant director Mike Berry. Technical director Ron Saxton. Remote supervisor Dave Ross. This is Marv Holman speaking for Kay Kessler. Saying so long from Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. For today, the Ohio State Buckeyes won their sixth consecutive game of the 1979 season by defeating Indiana 47-6. So long, everybody.